up your voice to heaven tonight. Lift up your hands to heaven and return all that glory to God. What a privilege. You and I are seeing the very last moment of the year 2023. This is the Lord's doing. Marvelous in our eyes, precious to our souls. Lift up your voice in thanksgiving tonight. Celebrate, appreciate, glorify this good God. He has seen us through to this very moment. Is somebody grateful? Make sure God is hearing your voice of gratitude tonight. Let God hear your voice of appreciation tonight. Our Father, we are grateful. Our Father, we are grateful. We have returned tonight with gratitude in our hearts for your faithfulness. Oh God, looking back into the year 2023, we have seen you on every side. We have come tonight. We're rejoicing with gratitude. Say thank you. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Make sure God is hearing your voice of thanksgiving tonight. My God, I give you praise. I give you glory. I am standing today because of your mercies. I am standing today because of your goodness. I am standing today because of your grace. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Lift up your voice. Be lavish with your thanksgiving tonight. My God, my Father, I am grateful for life, for health, for strength. To you be the praise. To you be the glory. I celebrate you. Father, for keeping me to this very moment. You are good. You are good. I am a testimony of your goodness. As a people, we have returned to say thank you. Our Father, thank you. Our God, thank you. We bless your name for bringing us to this cross overnight. Oh God, thank you. Oh Father, we bless you. We exalt you. Lift up your voice. God has prepared something wonderful, something gracious for us tonight. Father, everything that you have prepared, Lord, we are open. Father, we are here before you. We are here before you. Oh God, visit everyone today, whether on ground or online, wherever across the nations of the earth. Everyone is gathered tonight in this service. Oh God, visit everyone by your presence. Visit everyone by your power. Visit everyone by your spirit. Visit everyone by your word. Visit everyone. Is somebody expressing their appreciation? Express your expectation. Tonight, God is crossing us over into the year 2024. Give him praise. Give him glory. Our Father, we have returned. Have your way. Even tonight, let everyone worship return with a tangible encounter from this service. Oh Lord, you are crossing everyone. You are the one crossing us into the new year. We have returned. Oh God, deliver everyone's desire. Father, from this service, give everyone direction for the year 2024. We bless your name. We exalt you. We celebrate you. Our God, we thank you. We thank you for what you have reserved for tonight's service. For what you have prepared for tonight's service. In this crossover service, you are giving us new songs to sing. You are putting laughter in our mouth. Now begin to celebrate him. He has heard us, our Father. We thank you. We bless your name. Now wave your hands to heaven. Father, thank you. 
To you be the praise. To you be the glory. In Jesus' holy name, we are praying. I know God has done you well, and you want to share your testimony. Please go over to any of the six major entrances and the, the, document your testimony. And in due course, you'll be given the time to share. Put your blessed hands together for Jesus as we receive the Faith Tabernacle Choir. Jam those hands for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You can do it better. You can do it better. We have come tonight to worship the King of Glory. Make a joyful noise. Told the great I am. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You got times and seasons in your hands. Oh, yeah. For God, you've caught for light out of darkness. You don't need a man to be the God you are. Oh, glory. You are true. Call me your own. Is that your testimony? Say you've got time and seasons in your head. You call for life. You call for life. I am out of time. Man, do save a lot of You've got to be the God you are. Oh, you've chosen. You are chosen to call me your One more time. You've got time to say. You've got time and seasons From January to December. What a great God we serve. You are for life.
King of Glory. Put those hands together for the King of Kings. Hallelujah.
a big hand and please you may be seated in his presence. Hallelujah. We are beginning tonight with a note of thanksgiving and in a moment we are going to be rising to say Father in the name of Jesus 
Thank you for the diverse blessings granted to us as a commission and as individuals all through the year 2023. Somebody who is thankful, say a loud amen. amen. Psalm 103 verse 1 and 2, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Will you rise on your feet with me, and from the depth of your heart, lift your voice before the Lord, and begin to appreciate him from the depth of your heart for all of the blessings. It granted to us as a commission all of the blessings it granted to us as individuals Lord we have come today with a voice of appreciation with a voice of thanksgiving indeed you have blessed us you daily loaded us with benefits every single day every single week every single month and all through this year we have come with a voice of appreciation saying not unto us not unto us but unto you we give glory and we give praise are you appreciating god are you celebrating god are you glorifying him my father i have come to say thank you oh lord for diverse blessings on every side blessings in every area blessings in every dimension as a commission and as individuals you have not left yourself without a witness we have continued to experience your hand we have continued to experience your touch we have continued to experience your mighty acts in our midst oh lord god we have come tonight to say thank you all over the globe wherever you are connected make sure you are appreciating god for the diverse blessings for the diverse testimonies for his mighty hand that has been at work in our midst in our individual lives and as a commission our father we have come tonight to say that we are grateful we have come tonight to say that we are thankful we have come tonight to glorify your holy name are you thanking him are you blessing him are you glorifying him he said bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his name lift your voice and give glory unto him appreciate him both in your understanding and in the language of the spirit Oh Lord God, we have come to say thank you for diverse blessings you have granted to us as a commission and as individuals all through the year 2023. We have never lacked your blessing. We have never lacked your touch. Every department of our lives, every aspect of this commission has been blessed by you all through this year. We don't take it for granted. Lift your hand and wave it to Jesus. Father, thank you. And blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Give Jesus a big hand of praise and please be seated in his presence. Somebody said for an encounter this night, shout hallelujah. Still in the attitude of thanksgiving for the great hand of God upon this commission all through the year 2023 when we rise we shall be thanking him saying Father in the name of Jesus thank you for the full delivery of the covenant highway prophetic agenda in all facets of this commission can I hear louder amen Psalm 118 and verse 23. This is the lost doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Rise up on your feet and lift up your voice in thanksgiving. Saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the full delivery of the covenant highway prophetic agenda in all facets of this commission. 
all through the year 2023. Lord, we thank you because you said it and you did it in all facets of this commission. We thank you for the full delivery of the Covenant Highway Prophetic Agenda. We give you praise. We thank you for this is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. We thank you for your strange act, for your mighty works, Lord, in all facets of this commission, in fulfillment of the covenant highway prophetic agenda that you declare through your servant. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this is your doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Thank you for the marvelous things that you did across our church network. Thank you for the marvelous things you did across our mission, foreign mission operations. We give you praise. We thank you. We glorify your name, Jesus. Father, we thank you for the marvelous things you did in our education sector. We glorify your name, Jesus. Indeed, it is marvelous in our eyes. Lord, we have returned to you in thanksgiving because we acknowledge that you are the source. You are the doer. Every good and perfect gift come from you. We give you praise. Lift up your voice and thank him from the depth of your heart. Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus for the full delivery of the covenant highway prophetic agenda in all facets of this commission. Lord, we are not where we used to be. We thank you for the liftings, for the enlargement, for the expansion, for your mighty act and strange testimonies across all the operations, all the facets of this commission. Lord, it is your doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. It is your doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. We have returned to say thank you. Lift up your voice and thank him. Thank him genuinely from the depth of your heart. We thank you, Jesus, for the full delivery of the Covenant Highway prophetic agenda. Lord, in this year, 2023, across all the facets of this commission, you have proved yourself faithful. You have proved yourself mighty. Lord, we thank you for your marvelous act. Lord, for your glorious act. It is your doing, not the doing of any man. We give you all the glory. We give you all the adoration. Are you lifting up your voice in thanksgiving to this God who said it, who did it? Lord, we thank you for the full delivery of the covenant highway prophetic agenda in all facets of this commission. We glorify your name. It is your doing. It is marvelous in our heart. It's marvelous in our eyes. We give you praise. We exalt you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Shout it. Thank you, Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. Please be seated. Somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. Shortly again, we shall be rising up to give thanks unto God. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the global impact of this commission all through the year 2023. That amen can be stronger. Romans chapter 10 and verse 18b says, yes, verily. Their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. Please rise up on your feet, lift up your voice wherever you may be all across the globe. We are thanking the almighty God, saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the global impact of this commission all through the year 2023. 
let heaven hear your voice right now, wherever you may be. Raise your voice to the Almighty God. Let's thank Him. With a loud voice, let's thank Him. From the depth of your heart, let's thank Him. With a heart of gratitude, let's thank Him. We are saying, Father, in the name of Jesus the Christ, thank you. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Lord, we thank you. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Oh, Lord, we thank you for the global impact of this commission all through this year, 2023, for the global impact of this commission upon individuals. Oh, God, we thank you for the global impact of this commission on the body of Christ at large. Father, we thank you for the global impact of this commission. Oh, Lord, in different departments of life, we thank you for the global impact of this commission in the education sector. Father, we thank you for the global impact of this commission, Lord, in the publishing industry. Father, we thank you. Oh, Lord, for the global impact of this commission. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Lord, for the global impact of this commission and the release of the word of life. Lord, we thank you. We have returned today on this final hours of the year, 2023, in the name of Jesus, to say, Father, thank you. Father, thank you. For no man can do this. It is your doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, we have returned. Father, to say thank you. Father, thank you for the global impact of this commission. Oh, Lord, throughout this year, we have returned today to say, Father, not unto us, oh, Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name we give glory. Father, we thank you. Somebody is thanking the Lord. Raise your voice right now. Do it deliberately. Do it with the heart of gratitude. Do it in the Holy Ghost right now. Switch over to the language of the Holy Ghost. He's our helper. He's our helper. He that give us thanks in the spirit, do what it well. So thank God now. Thank him some more. Thank him some more. Irimako Shadam, Eligatam, Eburaba Katoria, Araba Balumako Sadam, Irimabo Kasa, Agodibaro Mako Shada, Edigatara, Allah Babara Mako Sam. Somebody's thanking the Lord. Thank him some more. Now the Holy Ghost. Thank him some more with a loud voice. Thank him some more. Irimakosa, Eda Boba Roba Kotaria, Araba Bolimako Sadam. Inigata tataka rada babara makosheria arobago sara anema mora bakota ebadoba erima molaga takata arebabola makoshara erima kosada lakata father we thank you eromagoli ayaka akrabago shara elimago sa wave your hands to the lord right now give him all the glory give him all the praise magnify his name Shout it loud with me. Father, we thank you. Louder yet, raise your hand. Father, we thank you. Now the loudest you can, lift up your hand and your voice. Father, we thank you. Say loud and believe in Amen. It is done. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given time. Now we shall be going further to a session of praise and the faith tabernacle choir shall be leading us as we do that right now. Put your hands together for the Lord as they take us further.
Jesus.
Hallelujah. Announce your neighbors around you. My God is wonderful. My God is wonderful. My God is wonderful. Tell more people what about you. What about you? My God has been wonderful to me in the year 2023. Come on, somebody is shouting. Shout of joy, joy, joy. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Congratulations to someone here. Amen. One more time, wave your hand before the Lord. It's worthy. It's worthy. It's worthy. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have given thanks. Please get seated. Hallelujah. I can see somebody smiling from here to here this evening. Because by the help of God, we have made it till this moment. And God who brought us this, this moment is taking us further. In the name of Jesus. I count it a great joy and honor tonight. On the behalf of God's servant, the apostle over this commission, Bishop David Oedipo, to welcome every one of us in this winner's family and others who are joining us from other background to this crossover night service of 2023 to 2024. Hallelujah. They expected you to be in the mortuary, but you are in the sanctuary. They, hallelujah. They expected you to be down, but you are here jumping. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. They expected you to be at the back, but you are now in the forefront. They expected you to be facing hardship, but now you are flourishing. To him alone be the glory forever. Tonight, amen. Tonight, we are here to reflect and to thank God over all that he has done. We are also here to project in hope. There is the backside of the reason we are here and there is the front side for which we are here. We have thanked God already by way of reflection. We have seen the Lord's goodness. Like that one leper, we have seen what the Lord has done and we have returned to him with thanks. But because life is a journey, we are also here to project, to project. Somebody may be wondering tonight, I haven't seen as much. Of course, God won't let you see everything at once. But if you thank him for much, he will give you some more. So for your thanksgiving tonight, get ready for more. <laughs> Whatever you saw for good in 2023, God will make you see much more in 2024. <laughs> But in case you feel downcast and you feel nothing around you to show, God asked me to tell you tonight in this welcome word that there is hope for you. Yeah. Say with me, there is hope for me. Hope for me. Say again, there is hope for me. Hope for me. The scripture tells us 
how we can know that there is hope for us. In Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 4, to him that is joined to the living, there is hope. What does that mean? If you are among the living, not among the dead, it's an indication that there is a hope for you. Shout it, there is hope for me. Say it again, there is hope for me. That you didn't die before now shows that there is hope for you. What is hope? Hope means to anticipate. Hope means to look forward to. Hope means to be excited about the future. Don't you see how God created you and I? Have you ever wondered why God did not put your eyes at the back but in front? Because he doesn't want you to look back at anything. He wants you to leave behind anything that is behind you. That's why tonight I want to ask you. Don't look at the past if you don't want to pass away with it. Only those who look forward will go forward. In the year 2024, you will go forward. If you have been crawling before now, you will soon be running. If you have been running before now, you will soon be flying. Shout it again, there is hope for me. Job chapter 14, verses 7 to 9. God says to you and I tonight, there is hope. For there is hope of a tree. And we are described as trees of righteousness in Isaiah chapter 61 verse 3. If it be cut down, assuming that in 2023 you are cut down to zero or before zero, God said, there is hope for you. Yes. Say it again, there is hope for me. In the plan of God for your life, there is no finality of failure. Failure is only for a moment. If it be cut down, that it will sprout again. God is a God of again and again. And that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wax old in the heart, and the stock thereof die in the ground, Hear what God is saying to you. Yet through the scent of water, it will board and bring forth boughs like a plant. Say it again, there is hope for me. So it doesn't matter your situation tonight and how you came in here tonight, defeated, downcast. God is saying to you, there is hope for you. Say it again, there is hope for me. And you hear what the scripture says? Hope never makes shame. Romans chapter 5 verse 5. No matter how downcast you are if you can hope in God, God is ready to do it again. Therefore, I like you in the course of this service tonight begin to speak to yourself. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Psalm 42 verses 5 and 11. Hope thou in God. Hope thou in God. Hope thou in God, for he shall yet raise you up as you praise him. Get ready tonight. Your hope shall be fired by the word that will come from his servant tonight. And everything that seems to be down will begin to rise again. Everything that seems to be down will be rising again. Every issue of your life that has been cut down before now will come back alive again. Shout it again, there is hope for me. The reason your hope must not be down is because even when the word comes, it has to meet with your faith. It has to come with your hope. For faith is the substance of the things we hope for. Without hope, there cannot be help from God. Tonight, God is going to help you. You will rise again. 2024, you will rise again. 2024, you will move forward again. 2024, everything will work for you again. 
2024 will be better than 2023 for you. Another wave of your hand. Everybody give glory to God. As we get ready tonight, the Faith Tabernacle Choir will be ministering live the word of God to us that will further inspire our hope for 2024. Give God a big hand as we receive them. You will 
supply your need. Protect you everywhere you go. You're living at an old honest. With Jesus, John, I will say, I'm on my way. By the love of the Lord, I am on my way.
up your two hands, everyone. You know you're on your way to better days. Lift up your two hands and give God thanks. Labole to Sekleria Liyar. Apeko Tanero, the Sekleria Libano. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus precious name we have given thanks. As far as your eyes can see, unto you will I give it. Those who see only troubles never get free from them. Those who see failure never see success. Those who only focus on challenges never become champions. Why we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen, but the things which are seen are temporal. But the things we are not seen, they are eternal. Now, guess what? When we were small as a church, I never saw a small church. When I had to believe for 500 naira for a trip, I never thought or saw that I was poor. You need to train up in spiritual matters. It is what to see that becomes your lot. It's time to begin to see through the eyes of scriptures. It's time for your covenant sight to come alive. You can't see poverty and experience plenty. You can't see suffering and experience freedom. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray that your covenant eyes comes open tonight. Yeah. I never saw that church will not grow in this forest. No. I saw what God said. And the word of the Lord which Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw. I saw the word. When you start seeing through the eyes of scriptures, you are creating a future. You are creating a future. Anybody could be afraid. I wasn't. If God said so, that's so. Amini Ankeno Amnera Elango. I can't see myself dead because he lives, I shall live also. So I could respond to the challenge of death in a dream. Satan, you must be a dummy. No one sees himself in a covenant and stays here. It is seen through the words that create a future. Seen through the scriptures is what creates a future. Seen through the scriptures is what creates a future. In the precious name of Jesus, your adventure in 2024 shall be stress-free.
shall be stress free. As you begin to see through the light of scriptures, you start shining. The Gentiles will come to your light. And they are kings to the brightness of your rising. I was ministering one day in Kaduna and then I was with all my strength. And I said, wait a minute, I'm not mad. I'm speaking to crowds that you cannot see. <laughs> there is no way you can see everybody that gathered tonight. There is no way you can see everybody that gathered tonight. Not even in Kenan land. There are folks you see here and then you wonder, oh, when did you come? It has been around for two years. It's time to start saying through the word and through the prophetic word of prophets sent your way. It's time. In the precious name of Jesus, whatever was a blockade to your life at any time in the past, clears off your path. Why I know that many are not saying what God says, that what they are saying is a proof of what they are saying. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. But from now, something has turned in your life. Lift up your two hands and thank him for light. It has started already. Thank him for light. It has started already. And thank him for light. It has started already. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. No building with a faulty foundation has a future. So we're looking at tonight as we move into 2024, unveiling the foundation of every great destiny in the kingdom. Unveiling the foundation of every great destiny in the kingdom. Get seated, please. For if the foundation be destroyed, the righteous can do nothing. Psalm 11, verse 3. The reason for the shakings, rattlings in many lives is that the foundation is faulty. The foundation needs attention. A building without a sure foundation is a risk. It's always abandoned. Spirituality is the foundation of every great destiny in the kingdom. <laughs> For that foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 11. For the foundation of God stands sure, sure, having this seal. 
2 Timothy 2, verse 19. The Lord made them that his and let everyone that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. That is the sure foundation of God for every believer. Depart from iniquity. Departure from iniquity is the definition of a sure foundation of every great destiny in the kingdom. No believer can be any more fulfilled in life than is spiritual. First Timothy 4 8. But exercise thyself rather unto godliness, for bodily exercise profits little, but godly exercise profitable unto all things, having the promise of the life which now is and the one which is to come. No believer can be any more fulfilled in life than his spiritual. No believer can be any more fulfilled in life than his spiritual. No believer can be any more fulfilled in life than his spiritual. That's why it says to be spiritually minded is life and peace, and to be carnally minded is death. Romans 8.6 That's why the word says I wish above all things Third John verse 2 That thou mayest prosper and be in health Even as thy soul prospered Or to the level of the prosperity of your spiritual life This is what we have failed to check We check in other things It is the only spiritual virtue that holds value both in the present world and in the world hereafter. Having the promise of the life which now is and the one which is to come. No other virtue in the kingdom holds those dual value but spirituality, godliness, the fear of God. Living a life to please God. A crave to be godly. Praise God. <laughs> All breakthroughs will stop here. All prophetic words will stop here. All miracles will stop here. Only goodness gets across there. Every other thing stops here. Having children stops here. Blessing children stops here. <laughs> Being renowned stops here. The only thing that goes out there is the quality of your work with God. An undying quest to please God. It decorates your life here and secures eternity there. What else are you looking for? <laughs> it decorates destinies here and secures eternity in grand styles. What else are you looking for? No one can command the supernatural than his spiritual. We saw Gehazi, the prophet who roared, the one that will work any wonder, didn't work in his hand. We saw that in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 29 to 37. And we saw the reason why his eyes was off God. He was a lover of this present world. <laughs> Thank you.
Whosoever loves this world, the word of the Father is not in him. It's not in him. When Elisha said, Naaman should go with all his gifts, <laughs> the guys, he said, never. How can he spare this man? When I'm going to get the kind of thing again, he pursued after him and collected his leprosy on return. No one can flourish in hard times than is spiritual. Psalm 37, verse 18 to 19. The Lord knows the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in evil time. In the evil time and the time of famine, they shall be satisfied. <laughs> no one can flourish in hard times than his spiritual. No one can exercise spiritual authority than his spiritual. Acts 19, 14 and 15. Jesus, we know, Paul, we know, but who are you? Spiritual authority demands spirituality for release, for manifestation. So everything that holds value in the kingdom demands spirituality for manifestation. The more spiritual we are, the healthier we live. Go and say no more. Let's say what than this happen to you. That's Jesus speaking. John 5, 14. No one can flow in revelation than the spiritual. Because the natural man receives not the things of the spirit of God. <laughs> Neither can he know them. 1 Corinthians 2, 14. Because they are spiritually designed. And many people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So you can't know them. Why? The secret of God is only accessible to them that fear him. And he will show them his covenant. So the man is shut out. He's in blackout. That you are in church does not mean you are spiritual. That you are, have a calling is not equal to spirituality. It's a conscious personal choice. It's not a gift. It's not a calling. It's not an endowment. It's a conscious personal choice that people make. You heard Paul said, exercise myself. To always have a conscience that's void of offense both towards God and towards men. Acts 24 verse 16. You heard Abraham said, I'll never take a threat from you. Let's see you make it Ram read. You heard Joseph said, How can I do this thing and sin against God? So it's a personal, conscious, personal choice that each one makes. May we get into 2024 with this personal, conscious choice Amen. to live a godly life. The losses are horrendous. The losses are nothing to toy with. Because a man that wanders away from the path of understanding, he shall abide in the congregation of the dead. So there are believers that are as good as dead. There is no illumination to push darkness away. It's time to review our spiritual stance. To maximize God's goodwill for his children in this time of uncertainties. It's your turn. Yeah. It's your turn. Yeah. It's your turn. No one can be any more protected in this high insecurity time than the spiritual. 
Psalm 91, verse 1. He that dwell in the place of the Most High shall abide under what? The shadows of the Almighty. <laughs> I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, and my God. In Him I will trust. Who shall ascend to the mountain of the Lord? He that has a clean hands and a pure heart. So you can't dwell in that presence without godliness, without spirituality. And that is our strong tower. Our strong tower is being under the shadow of the Almighty. Our strong tower. So one is vulnerable. Without spirituality. Everything seems to be against the believer. Who okay, care the least for spirituality? No one can live any more honorable life in the kingdom than is spiritual. In the greater, there are many houses, there are many vessels, some to honor, some to dishonor. If any man purchases his before this, it shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, made for the master's use, prepared unto every good work. <laughs> so, no destiny can be any more honorable in the kingdom than is spiritual. Than is spiritual. These are all covenant demands. And my covenant will I not break. No other those that gone forth out of my lips. No one's still worship can be any more profitable than the spiritual. Lord, we, we've done many marvelous works in your name. Get thee off my side. I know you not. You that walk iniquity. What a, what a word. Matthew 7, 21 to 23. No one's still worship can be any more profitable than that individual is spiritual. No one's still worship can be any more profitable than such individual is spiritual. So look at it all around. You find losses, losses, losses when this foundation is out of place. What is spirituality? A crave for godly living. Number one. We saw Philippians 3, verse 13 and 14. Paul speaking. Brethren, I can't not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do. So nobody has arrived where we're going. We are just going. We are just going. But we shouldn't go back. We should go forward. We are going. But this one thing I do. Forgetting those accomplishments that are behind. Like we are told in that church. And reaching forth unto those things that are before I press towards the mark for the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press, I press, I press. He said, no, no, I'm not perfect. He said, but one thing I do, I'm pressing. I'm pressing. I, I said, as many as are thus minded, let them keep the same rule. Keep pressing. When he shall appear, we shall be like him. But we keep pressing into the fullness of the stature of Christ unto a perfect man. We keep pressing. If those who are pressing are challenged, what of those who are not pressing at all? They'll be oppressed. They'll be oppressed. Hear what he said. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 4. Ye have not yet resisted, resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And I call it crave. There's a crave, an undying crave to please God. Number two, a faith driven determination to live a holy life. Be ye holy, that's okay. But it will only deliver by faith. This is why it will not deliver, that many don't believe it. 
be ye holy as I am holy. <laughs> Every provision in the kingdom delivers by faith. Delivers by faith. Delivers by faith. And Christ came on and said, be ye perfect. Now your heavenly father is perfect. What? Matthew 5, 48. <laughs> so, it is impossible in the energy of the flesh. But faith will make any impossibility possible without sweat. Without sweat. Without sweat. God won't tell me and you to be what has not engraced us to be if he choose to be. If he choose to be. And that choice on the platform of faith. If we believe to be, whatever he says to do, it is within his resources in us to be. Ameko treno, erobi and lenro. Ante krodia losha. Now, if our crave for spirituality will replace our crave for breakthroughs, <laughs> we'll be breaking forth on every side without sweat. On every side without sweat. Because you are now in active partnership with God. Can two walk together and say, do you agree? <laughs> So when you come to terms with God, you're working in active partnership with Him. And breakthrough becomes like breathing. Lift up your head, see gates, be lifted up your everlasting doors, the King of Glory might come in. You are not lifting nothing. You are just working with Him. And gates are lifted up. 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 I've said it before, we are in need because mostly we don't know what we need. We are in need mostly because we do not know what we need. Believers are in need today mostly because they don't know what they need. They don't know what they need and those who know don't care to put it to work. This is God's flashlight for 2024. A review of each one's spiritual stand. A crave for spiritual breakthrough. A crave for spiritual advancement. A crave to secure active partnership with Jesus. That makes you an unbeatable winner. An unstoppable champion. Christ went about doing good and healing them and were pressed with them because God was with them. Active partnership with Jesus makes you an all out winner. This will be your experience and our experience together in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, what is spirituality? The lightsome obedience to the commandments of scriptures. The lightsome obedience to the commandment of scriptures. Blessed is the man that fears the Lord, that delights himself greatly in his commandments. See the effect. His seed also shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Where and riches shall be in his house, not on his life, in his house. And such so says, endure it forever. That is an ever flourishing family and generation coming out of delightsome obedience. The lies of obedience. Hear what he said. Daniel, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 32 and 33. He said, You shall observe to do, therefore, as the Lord thy God has commanded thee, you shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. You shall walk in all the ways with the Lord your God has commanded you that you may live. That it may be well with you. That you may prolong your days in the land with the Lord which you shall possess. That's what happens. In summary, spirituality is living by the word. <laughs> 
man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Spirituality is living by the word. Living by the dictates of scriptures. When you see a man say, I don't care what he says, it's off. <laughs> Living by the dictates of scriptures as a way of life. Jesus said, I can of my own self do nothing as I hear, so I do. As I hear. John 5.30. <laughs> the son can do nothing on his own. Eh? What he sees the father does, that also does the son. <laughs> Living by the word is spirituality. So what is spirituality? It is scripturality. Spirituality is what? Scripturality. So it's not that you sleep and you wake up and you say well, you see a dream. That's not spirituality. Spirituality is living by the word, the dictates of the word, the dictates of the word. <laughs> so you find it wrapped up in that chapter 5 of um, John 22 all the way to 30. Talking about as I hear, so I do. As I see, I perform. You find it is living by the word. John 4, 32 to 40. I mean, 32 to 34. They say, as somebody brought him food, he said, I have some food to eat that you don't know about. My mate is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his works. <laughs> huh? But a body as he prepared me. <laughs> and I said, Lo, I've come to do thy will, oh God. So spirituality is scripturality. It's living by the word. It's living by the dictates of scriptures to create a great future. Living by the dictates of scriptures to create a great future. Amen. There's so much of what we are talking about. Lift up your right hand and take grace right now for a turnaround in your spiritual disposition in 2024. Lift up your right hand Lift up your right hand and take grace for a renewed spiritual disposition in 2024 so as to make the most of your adventure on earth. Le cotambre conatenia anzos roti ale prake. In Jesus' name. Now, very quickly. I want to quickly disabuse the ongoing around the world today. God said they will come and so they are here. Jesus came to condemn sin in the flesh. <laughs> Romans 8, 1 to 3. There is now no condemnation to all that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For the law, the law, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Sir, there is no law-free zone on earth. As you depart from Nigeria to Benin Republic on the other side here, you come under the laws of Benin Republic. So if you are afraid of laws in Nigeria, you got into laws there. <laughs> Amen. And you say, no, no, I don't like this place. You go to Kodova, you meet another stronger law waiting for you. Then you run from there, you say, I'm going to Russia. Well done. Before you get there, law is waiting at the gate. <laughs> People hate laws, disorder. People love disorder. Let me live my life. Can you also see like that in the nation? You just don't feel like driving on the right side. You want to live your life. Police will pick you up and mess you up. Grandma won't deliver you. You say, well, I don't feel like driving on the right side. You don't feel? Okay, you feel now. <laughs> when they use button on your back, you start feeling it. Now, you see, laws are not enemies. They are to put order to your life. There are laws of the spirit. If you won't comply, you are engaging the law of death. I mean, no cool. Train up. Now, look at verse 3. Verse 3 of it. For what the law could not do because it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. 
You know, your spirit cannot sin. Only your body can sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. People just like shortcuts. Huh? <laughs> so that's why they are called short. You better wake up and walk straight. Let your eyelids look straight before you. Jesus. Of whose grace you have all received. So what you are talking about is no grace. He condemned sin in the flesh. He lived to show that sin can be overcome. And he said, no one convinced me of sin. Hear what Jesus said, though. Listen, listen. Now, John 17, verse 19. He said, for their sake, I sanctify myself. <laughs> so it's not a thing that happens to you by chance. I sanctify. Now, here's the living word. Giving the Holy Ghost without measure. Yet, he took responsibility to live a sanctified life. I sanctify myself. I sanctify myself. I sanctify myself. So stop waving your hand and say, I know it will happen. It won't happen. You have to take responsibility. You have, I have to take responsibility. We have to take responsibility. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. That it's a possibility. Praise God. He said to that man that was healed, go and say no more, lest it was in a day happen to you. So sin make things worse. John 5, 14. Neither do I condemn you, but go and say no more. John 8, 11. <laughs> he said to them, I know you not, you that walk iniquity, even though you have been working for me, working for me in sin, has eradicated the benefit of it. You would say, you are either spiritual or carnal, you cannot be neutral. One is either spiritual or carnal, it cannot be neutral. One is either spiritual or carnal, it cannot be neutral. He said to the Corinthian church, Are you not carnal? Do you not work as men? First Corinthians 3 1 to 3. And we saw how they demonstrated that they were having affairs with their father's wives. First Corinthians chapter 5. We saw chapter 6 how Paul began to define what spirituality is all about. <laughs> Beginning from verse 9 to 11. Be not deceived. No unrighteous man that entered the kingdom of God. And he began to list all that he called unrighteousness. So it's not something to appropriate. It's something to look at and set yourself free from it. Oh, you are setting yourself free for death. A more content, a routine here. It's, it's, it's a thing to wake up to do. Hard times are here. But the truly spiritual will escape. The truly spiritual will escape. The truly spiritual will escape. Please know that faith is impotent without a good conscience. First Timothy 1, verse 19. Holding faith and a good conscience, which some have ignored concerning faith and have made the shipwreck of their life. Holding faith and a good conscience, which some have ignored concerning the faith and have made the shipwreck of their journey. The mystery of faith loses its potency without a pure conscience. Holding faith, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience, but it will never deliver. It will never, never deliver. It's time to review our spiritual standing with God. Sin is not to be condoned, but confronted and conquered. Sin is not a friend, though. it's an enemy. He caught down Amnon in his golden age, pulled out the eyes of <laughs> Samson. 
haven't been the ruler of, of Israel for 40 years. Sin is an enemy. Sin is not a friend. And Jesus came to save us from our sins. He that committed sins of the devil, for that purpose, the Son of God was made manifest to destroy the works of the devil. First John chapter 3, verse 8. No one is rapturable with sin. Don't wait till for the great revolution. Many antichrists and false teachers are on the loose in the body of Christ globally today. They are out deceiving many. Second Peter 2, 1 to 3, and 1 John 2, and verse 18. It's not enough to pray, not to be trapped. One must stay on the watch against the diverse tricks of the enemy to get believers out of the way. No one shall be caught up. As we close, what are the benefits of spirituality? Some have been mentioned. What are the benefits of spirituality? One secures access to revelation. The secret of the Lord is for them that fear him and he will show them his covenant. Which implies access to our inheritance. Number two, it secures access to divine wisdom which enthrones. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The knowledge of the Holy is understanding. Psalm 111 verse 10 and Proverbs 9 and verse 10. <laughs> we saw that decoration. In, I mean in Job 28 and verse 7 to 25 or to 27, it is by the fear of the Lord we are says that kind of wisdom that's not available in the world. In the world. Put to you and me on top of situations. What does it offer? Answers to prayers. If I hide iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. But well, now the Lord has heard me because I've repented of my sins and has given, forgiven them on my behalf. So we saw how godliness enthroned Joseph in Egypt. It enthroned Daniel in Babylon. It keeps enthroning everyone that will embrace it as a lifestyle. You are the next one for enthronement. You are the next one for enthronement. Yeah. <laughs> in Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13, the Bible says, Hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the will of God, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Conclusion of the whole matter. The whole Bible. That's the conclusion. The whole Bible. That's the conclusion of the whole world. The word of God. The whole conclusion. The whole detail of man. A great year is ahead of you. A great year is ahead of you. A great year is ahead of you. Lift up your right hand. Grace to make this choice by faith and commit to it as a lifetime. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. Leporadish akenantos enclo prectanorada aleto prectanarayalo enclang glang prectanarada bolis. Grace to make this choice and commit to it as a lifestyle so as to open up my future and maximize God's agenda for my life. I receive it right now in Jesus' precious name. 
we have prayed. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Amen. Amen. 2023 is winding up very fast. There are individuals here right now that need to just open up to this new year in a new way. You know you are not saved. You are in church, that's okay. But you are not born again. You know it yourself. I was in the choir. I wasn't saved. Amen. So, so it, it's not about where you are. It's about who you are in Christ. If you are here this evening or this night, and you want to say, Jesus, I don't want to cross over to 2024 as a sinner. I want my sins forgiven. I want to become a child of God. I want to know the meaning of freedom, the meaning of liberty that you offer the world. Wherever you are, stand to your feet tonight across the nations of the world. Jesus, save my soul tonight. Forgive me my sins tonight. Stand to your feet. Many more are standing up wherever you are. Can I have the choir sing this song, please, while they are rising up? Mm. My body is your sanctuary. Purify me as gold. So I'm good to say, so I'm able to say, my body is a sanctuary. And just connect with that song and offer your body as a living sacrifice unto God where you are seated, where you are seated. Those who are standing up for this prayer, please stand and stay on your feet. Because tonight is marking a turnaround in your spiritual life. A turnaround that will turn things around in every area of your life. With you everywhere. Just let it be well with you spiritually. Every other area will be taken care of. Can I hear your amen? amen? Amen. Sing that song a few seconds. My body is your sanctuary. My body is your sanctuary. standing up for Christ right now, find your way to the front, but in faith tabernacle, please stand where you are. There are quite a number of people outside and everywhere. Please stand where you are. The officials are standing by you, and we pray together at the same time. Two more times, please. My body is your sanctuary. My body is your sanctuary. standing for these prayers, please lift up your right hand to heaven and pray this simple prayer of faith after me 
and let all the officials standing by them pray along with them. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you tonight. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again for my justification. Jesus, I repent of all my sins tonight and I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm not a child of God. I'm free from the kingdom of darkness to serve the living God all the days of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me back to the faith. By your grace, I shall serve you all the days of my life. Amen. Keep your hands up as I pray. Father, I pray for everyone that stood in for this prayer tonight. Let the grace that found them preserve them. Let your hand that drew them keep them. Let none of them go back to where they're coming from. Let no one return back to their vomit anymore. And I pray that this day will be that day you have been longing for all the days of your life. In the name of Jesus. Your struggles are over. Your tears are over. It's a new dawn. In Jesus' name. Congratulations. 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 Amen. Shall we all rise, please? Hallelujah. Let him hear the voice of your thanksgiving with all intensity in the next two minutes. Let him hear the voice of your thanksgiving with all intensity in the next two minutes. I want to thank you, my God, for keeping and preserving me till now. I want to thank you for keeping me alive in the faith. Thank you for preserving me in the faith. Thank you for sustaining the breath in my nostrils. I thank you for keeping me on my feet all through 2023. No one else could have done this. You did it. You alone did it. did it, Jesus. The glory belongs to you. And to you only. Leborale Kalenaros. Leborede Akerados. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have given time. Now look into 2024. It's about three minutes more to go. Amen. And begin to say to the Lord, 2024, here I come. I come with active partnership with Jesus. I come with a quality work with Jesus. I come to dominate. 2024, here I come with a renewed spiritual power. A renewed spiritual power. Begin to speak to 2024 right now. 
January, February, March, here I come. No evil report. Here I come. Breakthrough everywhere, beginning from switch up breakthrough. Here I come. 2024, here I come. A bona fide son of the most high God. Here I come with active partnership with my God. Here I come with a renewed spiritual power. Precious name, we are praying. We are going to shout Hosanna into 2024. Hosanna! Hosanna! We made it! By His grace, we made it! Hosanna! shouting, we are now doing dancing. Now, you'll be dancing all through the year 2024. God has finally turned your money into dancing. Come on out.
Congratulations to all members of the Winners Family Worldwide in the name of Jesus Christ. Congratulations, congratulations. That's all you'll be hearing all through 2024. January, congratulations. February, congratulations. March, congratulations. April, congratulations. May, congratulations. June, congratulations. July, con congratulations. August, congratulations. September, congratulations. October, congratulations. November, congratulations. December, congratulations.
Give the Lord a big hand of praise and get seated, please. Hallelujah. Amos chapter 3 and verse 7. Surely, the Lord God will do nothing but he reveals his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. I've heard from the Lord concerning your 2024. Amen. It shall be your year of release. From every form of servitude and slavery. It shall mark the end of all misfortunes around your life. It shall be your Isaac order of year. Your year of enviable turnaround. It shall be your year of spiritual breakthroughs. That will set the pace for breakthroughs in all other areas of your life. It shall be your year of fearful favor. It shall be your year of unchecked enlargement. Like Naphtali, you shall be satisfied with favor and filled with the blessings of the Lord. Every winner that will care to maintain a walk with God shall dip his foot in oil. Yeah. And as your day, so shall your strength be. Yeah. It shall be your supernatural flight. Yeah. You jump levels. Yeah. You'll be jumping levels. Yeah. You'll be jumping levels. Yeah. God is bringing every winner from the street corner to the limelight. Yeah. It shall be your year of high favor after the order of Mary. Yeah. Favor will locate you to make the impossible happen in your life. We know from scriptures that fortune is a cure, favor is a cure for all forms of misfortune. Favor, favor. It turned the misfortune of Joseph around. Favor, favor, favor is the cure for all misfortune. You will never know setback anymore in your journey. <laughs> Esther was a captive, yet he was referred to be the queen of the king. Favor turned the table around against his enemy, against our enemy. That's where we are stepping into. Yeah. So the year 2024 shall be known as Fortune 2024. Yeah. The Lord is bringing you into the realm of fortune you have been longing for all your life. Yeah. It will begin with your spiritual fortune. Yeah. You'll be walking in realms you have never known in your life before. Yeah. And it will keep opening doors in all other areas of your life. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. So I welcome you to Fortune 2024. I welcome you to Fortune 
2024. And it shall answer in your life. Now, read that scripture. It's Psalm 102, verse 13 to 15. Nothing of value is ever free. What does it take to operate in this realm of fortune? What I call fortune is fearful favor. What do I call it? Fearful favor. The favor that lands on you and you don't know what to do but to cry. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but to cry. Now, Psalm 102, verse 13 to 15, the word says, He said, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. Good news. The time to favor you has finally come. How? For thy servants to get pleasure in the stones of Zion and favor the very dust thereof. Therefore, the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord, fearful favor, and not the kings of the earth, their glory. Many globally rated citizens will rise from here. Yeah. The hard times of the world will become the high times of the church. Yeah. There are hard times that are going to be our high times. Yeah. Nothing is working in them, but the Bible says, mm. Then you shall return. And the sound between righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. For the whole earth shall burn like an oven. And all the proud, and all that do wickedly shall be stubborn. If that comes, we burn them up, neither root nor no branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healings in his wings. Shall be going forth. Amen. And growing up while they are burning down. When they shall see there's a cut, cutting down, you shall be saying what? It's your season. And I will spare them as a man spares his own sense that serves him. So serving God is our bailout. It's our launching pad. Serving God is our launching pad into that realm of fortune. The number of people are working in it, you are changing level. Amen. Some are yet to experience it, you are going to experience it. Amen. Carrying God in your heart and on your head will launch you into Raymond's fortune any day, any time. It's your turn. Amen. I say one more time, welcome to Fortune 2024. Amen. One more time, welcome to Fortune 2024. Stand to your feet. I step into Fortune 2024 Believing in God and believing in His prophet, that He shall answer to me as He spoken. Go ahead and declare it. Declare it. Believe the Lord your God; you shall prosper. You shall be established. Believe also His prophets; so shall you prosper. Fortune twenty twenty four. Here I come. I believe in the God of my Father, and I believe in His calling as a prophet. And I prosper by this launching today. Misfortunes are over. Setbacks are over. Misfortunes are over. Setbacks are over. Misfortunes are over. Setbacks are over.
in Jesus precious name we are praying now lay up your expectation haven't known God's agenda right now before him you are before your father your heavenly father now what do you look forward to based on the light shown to you tonight or what the year carries go ahead and talk to him go ahead and talk to him What do you look forward to? Spiritual life. Your family life. Your business and career. What are you looking forward to in 2024? What are you looking forward to in 2024? Give it the expression. Give it expression tonight. Give it expression tonight. What are you looking forward to? Now begin to thank him. Give him thanks to make him hear what you have said. Be anxious for nothing. In everything by prayer and supplication, we thanksgiving. Give him thanks for making 2024 answer to you in practical terms in all areas. 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 In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Fortune 2024 shall answer to you in practical terms. Fortune shall be speaking wherever you appear. Amen. What eyes have not seen or ears heard you begin to manifest in your own life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. One more time, Happy New Year. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand and celebrate Him.
we lift up our two hands to heaven everyone lift up your two hands to heaven everyone wherever we are around the world at this time and thank God for bringing you into fortune 2024 one more time thank him for it it's the doing of the Lord it's not by our power or by our might thank him for bringing you into fortune 2024 
In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Amen. The voice of thanksgiving shall not cease in your habitation. Amen. All through the year 2024. Amen. Everything about your life we tear thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus Christ. As said here again and again, please get seated. No one ever arrives at a future he cannot see. Genesis 13, 14 and 15. God said to Abraham, look to the north, the south, the east and the west. All the land without says unto you will I give it. No one ever arrives at the future that he cannot see. In the same vein, no one ever arrives at the future is not prepared for. No one arrives at the future is not prepared for. And I think that's the holy sense of the 21 days of prayer and fasting. To kickstart the year with adequate spiritual preparation to make the most of it. Don't do younger for Jesus. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that in due time he may exalt you. There will be strange liftings this year. Yeah. You will not be missing out of it. Yeah. There will be diverse lifting without him on hand. Yeah. Strange liftings without him on hand. Your place shall not be missing there. Amen. The last days are the days of the tables of the covenant in the body of Christ. That is working in the covenant of scriptures will be what distinguishes one believer from another. For my covenant will I not break, nor alter those things that are gone forth out of my lips. Psalm 119 and Psalm 89, verse 34. Except my covenant be not with the day and with the night. If I have not appointed the goodness of heaven, then may also my servant, my covenant with my servant be broken. Jeremiah 33, verse 20 and 21. And to the Levite, my priest. So God's covenant with the redeemed is as binding as the covenant of the day and of the night. Until the day and the night ceases to be, God's covenant remains in force. Now here is it. Very simple. And we are very conversant with it. There is no provision of scriptures without conditions to meet for delivery. There is no provision of the kingdom without conditions to meet for delivery. As free as salvation is, until a man truly repents, he cannot be converted or be saved. Now, now, now let me come down here quickly. Let me say this. <laughs> what we call repentance now is more of a show than a reality. It is godless sorrow that works repentance. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. Whatever a man is not truly sorry of, he cannot truly repent of it. It's only here where they say, I'm sorry, and then you are smiling. Godless sorrow, godless sorrow is what works repentance. The reason why many people make confessions and there is no reflection because there is no genuine repentance. There is no genuine repentance. As free as salvation is, there is what we must do to be saved. Here is a big agenda. Fortune 2024. What must I do to operate in the realm of fortune 
laid up for me in 2024 what is required of me. Ameku Tronia Akuta Prandi Kanubalo. He brought me to the revelation of the covenant quite early. Maybe some 41 years ago. From Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. My prosperity plan is not a promise. It doesn't answer to prayers. He said to me, it's not a promise. It has no respect for fasting. It's a covenant until your part is played. I'm not committed. Very simple statement from the mouth of the Spirit of God. God will not be committed to the delivery of any provision of the kingdom without your part being played and certified played. <laughs> so for Fortune 24 not to fly over your head, there are things that you and I must know as a requirement for delivery. So as you run through this little <laughs> charge, please take note of them. Now, listen. Favor begins with salvation. That shall compass the righteous about with favor as with a shield. Psalm 5 and verse 12. And we were made the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21. So we have his righteousness which entitles us to his favor. To be surrounded by favor, so to call it fortune. Eh? Surrounded by favor. So every child of God is a child of favor. Is surrounded by favor. Why? He's born of favor. By grace we are saved. Through faith. Not of our own. Not of worse than a man should boast. Grace means divine favor. So we are born of divine favor to be cocooned in favor as we live our life. So our escape from misfortune is salvation. Our only escape from the dungeon of misfortune is salvation. How shall we escape if it's neglect to great is salvation? Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3. Salvation is our great escape from the dungeon of misfortune, the kingdom of darkness, where there is weeping and gnashing of, wheat, of, of teeth. That is gross misfortune. And Christ came and translated us from that kingdom. He delivered us, brought us to his kingdom. You want to walk in fortune 2024? Secure your salvation. Do what? Secure your salvation. Secure. When the prodigal son walked away from his father, he became a victim of misfortune. Secure your salvation with your God. Secure your salvation. He walked away and he came back naked. Secure your salvation. Secure your salvation. Let your salvation be precious to you more than any other thing. Let your salvation be precious to you more than any other thing. Let your spiritual life hold the strongest way on your life. You'll never walk out of fortune. You'll be cocooned by it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's a brand new day. Second, spiritual virtue to mind is godliness. We said it earlier, Psalm 33, verse 18 and 19. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in farming. Only favor can keep a man alive in farming. There is nowhere to buy food, yet you must eat. 
There is no food in the market, yet you must eat. That's what they call favor, 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 favor. They must the fear of God for manifestation. The fear of God is required for any man, any woman, to enjoy fearful favor. The kind that the widow of Zarephath enjoyed for three and a half years. She was freed in fact from a last meal. A last meal. A last meal. Fearful. You can imagine what she feels like every morning that she will go to the kitchen and still find flour there and still find oil there. Fearful favor. Fearful favor. Answers to those who fear the Lord. Can I hear your amen? amen. Number three. Maintain a genuine love for God. A genuine love for God. For we know that all things are created for good to them that love God. Don't fake your love for God. <laughs> Prove the signs of your love at all times. Romans 8.28 For we know that all things are together to them that love God to them that called according to his purpose. 1 Corinthians 2.9 Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, that's the heart of any man. What God has in store for them that love Him. Maintain a genuine love for God to operate effectively in this era of fortune that has come upon us. And then, number four, Delight yourself in obeying God. Let whatever God says be final authority over your life. Delight solemnly subscribe to every commandment of scriptures to secure your great future. Obedience better than sacrifice to happen at the fat of rounds. So important. Be delighted in obeying God that is subscribing to the commandments of his word as a lifestyle. It keeps a man in the realm of fortune. God commanded Abraham to take his son and offer him for a sacrifice, he rope up early in the morning. Now, Genesis 22, verse 16, <laughs> God said, By myself I was sworn, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not we heard thy only son, thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, in multiplying I will multiply thee, as the stars of the heaven, and as the sun that's by the seashore, and thy seashore possess the gate of their enemy. And thy seed, and in thy seed shall the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Hmm. It is this kind of life and death obedience that provokes sworn blessing. Sworn blessing. Sworn blessing. When God swears a blessing, forget about the devil, it's of the equation completely. When God swears a blessing, he stands. Who can cause? Whom God has not caused? Who can defy? Whom the Lord has not defied? Whosoever dares it will be caused by God. So it launches us into realms of fortune. It keeps us under the cocoon, the canopy of fortune. Sustainable, untiring obedience. Thank you, Jesus. That was how Isaac got there. Thou shalt not go down to Egypt. Yes, sir. Abide in this land that I show you. Yes, sir. And one year was a one year of turnaround. The year 2024 shall be your year of massive, inexplainable, and undeniable turnaround.
Number five, engage in fruitful stewardship. Fruitful stewardship. You gave me a pan. I've made 10 pounds more. Fruitful. Value adding. Well done. Thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Now have the authority over 10 cities. From things to cities. From things to cities. Engage in fruitful stewardship. They that torment righteousness shall shine as the stars forever and ever. Engage in fruitful stewardship. God does not reward efforts made. He rewards results obtained. God does not reward efforts made. He only rewards results obtained. Be spiritually committed to any assignment that you are doing to ensure that it's value adding, value adding, value adding, value adding. You are not, shall not a problem, a problem, problem, problem. Problematic culture, you are a source of joy to others. You are a motivation to others. You are not sure you are a motivation to others. You are security you are a motivation to others. You are winning souls, you are just hunting for results, not for effort. No, somebody must be saved today in Jesus' name. And you're praying for them and you're watching over them. Praise God. Fruitful. It's not enough to be faithful. We must be fruitful. We must be value adding in our still worship. Praise God. Praise God. We are talking about spiritual virtues that keeps a man under the cloud of fortune. Under the cloud of fortune. The next we're looking at is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It makes believers to smell favor. The mention of your name steers favor. It's not only preachers that need the anointing. Everybody that wants to make the most of his life needs fresh oil, fresh oil that carries fresh smell of favor, fresh smell of favor, fresh smell of favor. They mention your name, favor just oozes. Ooh. Fresh oil. In Psalm 45, verse 6, the word says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scripture of thy kingdom is a righteous scripture. Thou lovest righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And it went down there in verse 8 All thy garments smell of Maya and aloes and cash out of the ivory fallacies wherein they have made thee glad. King's daughters were among thy honorable women upon thy right hand did stand the queen in good of offer. Now hearken, O daughter, and consider and incline thy eye, forget also thy own people and thy father's house. So shall the king greatly desire thy beauty, for he is thy lord, and worship thou him. Now verse 12, and the daughters of, the, of Tia shall be there with a gift. Even the rich among the people shall entreat thy favor. You are carrying a smell of favor with fresh oil. Yeah. So the anointing of this morning will keep you under the canopy of divine favor. Yeah. All through the year 2024. Nobody will say to you forever, I don't want to see you get out of here. Yeah. Wherever you appear, you'll be most honorably welcome. Yeah. The favor of God will answer in your favor all the time. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Number seven, Revelation. Good understanding procures favor. But the way of the transgressor is hard. Hard. 
Revelations pours favor. Revelations pours favor. Revelations pours favor. When light comes, darkness clears. Darkness connotes misfortune. Weeping and gnashing of teeth. But when light comes, misfortune clears. When misfortune clears, fortune flows in. Light is sweet. It's a beautiful thing for the eyes to behold the sun. Light is sweet. It's a beautiful thing for the eyes to behold the sun. Light is sweet. It's a beautiful eye for the... I mean, uh, God said to me when I said, Lord, um, what else do you have for me for this journey? He said, you have two eyes. Can you make one to look up and one to look down? Anytime you're looking onto men, never claim to be looking onto me. But if you fix your eyes on me, you'll never be ashamed. September 6, 1983. 40 years plus. I've not been tempted to look elsewhere but to him. And I've never suffered shame for doing so. My God, what am I talking about? Revelation clears misfortune off your path. Lord, who pays me? You come into ministry. And then he answered me about two weeks after. He said, after this, he appointed 70 others also. He said, you are in my employment. I am responsible. Just stay on duty. Three statements. Sir. I secured my unending pay with his promotion agenda that he doesn't call up for interview. Light is sweet. It's a beautiful thing for the eyes to behold. The sun. Light is sweet. What's your purpose for instituting the marriage union? And you unveiled to me seven keys. And we are here today, these seven days after marriage. <laughs> Without any stress, no pretenses. No pretenses. That's how light pours favor. It clears the darkness from misfortune and clears the way to the future. Say with me, light is sweet. So walking in light of scriptures is walking in favor. Walking in light of scriptures is walking in fearful favor. Fearful favor. When we began to teach history marriage, everybody got angry. They got very angry. Those days, it is not the kind of light we have today that everybody is just walking in it for free. People expected it, so they were having it. They expected plenty of trouble, they were having it. They were committed to learning how to solve the problems, not how to be free from it. Come on, I said light is sweet. Since I saw the light of church growth, sir, you may think it's not growing, it's only you who think so. I see it growing, I see it exploding, I see it just moving. Light is sweet. In 2024, you will not lack access to light. Amen. Darkness shall cover the earth and grass and the people, but the Lord shall light us upon thee. And his light shall be seen upon thee. The Gentiles will come to your light. Amen. And they are kings to the brightness of your rising. Amen. Come and give the Lord a big hand of praise. Amen. So you can't afford to keep your Bible somewhere after Sunday service and be looking for it the next Sunday. That you are not the kind of people we are talking about. I saw highways this year. From scriptures. I saw it, it was so broad. Mm. <laughs> if we don't know any other thing more than what God told us in 2023, we're okay. If we would trade those things effectively. Somebody's story has changed. But well, that one, let me hear your loudest amen. The good news is in 2024 you will not lack access to light. Yeah. And grace to walk in the light, receive it right now. Yeah. And I hear your loudest, amen. Yeah. The next we're looking at is the giving grace. As you are bound in everything, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 7, see that you are bound in this grace also. See that you are bound in this grace also. 
There's one that scattereth and yet has more. Luke 11, 24 and 25. I mean, Proverbs 11, 24 and 25. There's one that we hold the more than it's required. It tends more to penury. We need giving grace to work in financial fortune. Everybody needs the giving grace to work in financial fortune. Everybody needs the giving grace to work in financial fortune. <laughs> There is no amount of prayer under heaven that can bring any man under financial fortune without being a giver. There is no way to pray. There is no apostle who can lay hands on you to <laughs> enjoy financial fortune without being a giver. There is no prosperity church you can attend on your life in your life that can change your story. As you abandon everything. <laughs> See that you are bound in this grace also. We saw that grace upon my Syrian church in their poverty. Abba, the level of their liberality was unspeakable. Beyond their power, beyond their power, they were willing. So it is that power beyond your power that you need to work in financial fortune. You can take time to read from verse 1 to 7. There is no prophetic blessing that can make you work in financial fortune. Without being a giver. <laughs> you know, Papa is an apostle of prosperity. He can't do it. He has no capacity to break scriptures. Mm. Amen. God will give you the anointing that will break his word. No. no. So it's not about where you are, it's about where you stand. It's about where you stand in God. Everybody needs the giving grace to taste financial fortune. That's the fortune we are working in as a church today. Amen. Amen. We have the God-given grace for not just doing, but overdoing. Amen. You know overdo? <laughs> we can't tell you all the stories here, but it's our delight from the beginning to keep pushing to where there are needs. During one of the events in Nigeria here, some disaster, what we brought in, they say, was so more than what Red Cross brought during the Civil War. For the bailout of people. If you are not a scatterer, forget it. All this holding the Bible in your chest won't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> you open some CTCs and put it under your pillow. <laughs> eh? It brought us to a worthy place. You just tear the Bible. <laughs> You get in there through working in financial covenant that anchors on giving. That anchors on what? Giving. No explanation, we turn it off. You know why I can't repent? The way they are making mockery of those who repent. You go to hell. So, so. No reason is tenable, sir. No reason is tenable. Anyone is not a giver, no matter how smart he may claim to be, sir, he's uh, undoing his future. Is the way to stay in it. We have stayed in it all this time. It works like fire. Somebody's soul is changing. Amen. Everybody needs the giving grace in this time of financial holocaust. Everybody needs what? The giving grace. God was going to help the beauty of Zarepa. He sent the prophet to him to give what he has. So as to assess what he can know how. Amen. Amen. You give. Giving is key to it. And consistency in your given life is the rule of the game. Imagine if every engraved soul in this church looks after a needy one. We have a most super healthy church. If every engraved soul we add one challenge or two to his budget for their well-being. We have a super healthy church. Mm. It's a brand new day. It's a brand new day. It's a brand new day. It's a brand new day for you. 
the giving grace will come upon you in a new dimension this year. In the name of Jesus. Finally, number nine. And we have been in this, in, in this since the month of November. And it's called praise. What do I call it? Praise triggers access to favor. Access to favor. Access to favor. The anointing grants us access to the garment of praise. Let's call that the royal apparel that Esther put on and obtained favor from the king and rescued the whole of the community of Israel from being massacred. Ask me anything, I'll give you to the half of my kingdom. Now, let's go down to Herod, who was having a bad day. I know that that daughter came to dance, and he pleased the king well. And he said, who is that? He said, Herod, come here. Ask me anything to the half of my kingdom. That's favor. That's what praise does. It triggers the favor of your heavenly father. <laughs> Ask me anything, even to the half of my kingdom, and it's yours. So that interprets the case of Esther in Esther chapter 5. Amen. Royal appearance means a priest appearing. He appeared before the king with his praise appearing. And the goodness sense was pointed to her. In the name of Jesus, throughout the year 2024, his praise shall continually be in your mouth. His praise shall continually be in your mouth. Yeah. And his fearful favor will become your experience. Yeah. His fearful favor will become your experience. Yeah. His fearful favor will become your experience. Yeah. So favor triggers, I mean, praise triggers fearful favor. Anything to the half of my kingdom is yours. That's fearful. Anything to the half of my kingdom is yours. That's fearful. That's fearful. Amen. And that's what, when praise pleases God, his fearful favor comes down. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus, it is your turn at last. Amen. Stand to your feet, everybody. Amen. Lift up your two hands. And magnify God. Celebrate Him. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Now, would you pray this prayer? It's the first day of the year. Jesus, help me to value my spiritual life above all else. <laughs> Jesus, engrace me to crave for godliness as a lifestyle. Jesus, engrace me with the life. The light of obedience to your world as a way of life all through 19, 2024. Jesus, engrave me for value adding still worship, fruitful still worship all through the year. Would you like to pray? Lord, come to anoint me afresh so I can keep carrying the smell of favor on my life. Let my head never lack ointment. Let my garment be ever be pure. Jesus, pray the prayer. Enlighten my understanding so as to clear misfortune off my path and off my territory. 
enhance your giving grace in my life. Enhance your giving grace in my life. So I can keep enjoying financial fortune in this awesome year. And grace me to remain genuinely praiseful by being genuinely grateful all through the year. I must not suffer any trace of misfortune. It's my year of fortune as ordained by God. Pray this prayer over your life. These are the things to do to operate under the cloud of Fortune 2024. These are things to align with. Somebody is praying that prayer with all his heart. Now, give him thanks for having had you. Give him thanks from the depth of your heart for having had you. I'm not stepping out of the territory of fortune in 2024. There shall be no issue of misfortune around me and in my territory. Good news only, good news ever. I shall be hearing congratulations every, every month, every week of the year. No reversal. No downward trend. So help me, Jesus. So help me, Jesus. So help me, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Please, please stay awake. You are determining the events of 2024 this night. Uh, you are determining that this the event of 2024 in your life this night. So stay awake, sir. Stay awake. Don't let any devil rob you of what belongs to you. Fortune 2024 is not an accolade. A prophetic agenda. It's a prophetic agenda. It's not an accolade. It's not looking for what to say. I heard from God. It's our era of fortune. Amen. Amen. And these are the things to do to secure your place in it. So stay awake. Stay awake and stay awake spiritually. Stay awake and watch what this night will bring about in your life. What to do with the first determines what happens with the rest. Don't miss it. Give the Lord a big hand and take your seat. Please be seated. Shout hallelujah. Shortly we shall rise to pray. And we are praying saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, let this year, Fortune 2024, answer to its name in the life of every winner and this commission as a whole. Shout the ladders of amen. amen. Isaiah 55, verse 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Rise on your feet with me right now as we pray with all fervency and zeal. Saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, let this year, Fortune 2024, answer to his name in the life of every winner and this commission as a whole. Lift up your voice and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, let this year, Fortune 2024, 
answer to its name in the life of every winner and this commission as a whole. Father, in the name of Jesus, let this year fortune 2024 answer to its name in the life of every winner and this commission as a whole. Lift up your voice and pray fervently. Don't mutter words. Pray with all your zeal. Pray with all your zest. Father, in the name of Jesus, let this year fortune 2024 answer to his name in the life of every winner and this commission as a whole. Are you praying? Winner in the house, lift up your voice and pray with all your fire. Pray with all your zeal. Pray with every fire inside of you. Father, in the name of Jesus, let this year fortune 2024 answer to its name in the life of every winner and this commission as a whole. Don't mutter words. Don't look around. Be intentional in your prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, let this year fortune 2024 answer to its name in the life of every winner and this commission as a whole. Whatever Adam call it, that is what it was. Whatsoever you call it, that is what it will be. And Christ has naming this is our year of fortune fortune 2024 shall answer to his name in the life of every winner and this commission as a whole father in the name of jesus let this year fortune 2024 answer to his name in the life of every winner and this commission as a whole lift up your voice pray in the spirit pray in your understanding make sure you are praying pray it to answer Pray it to fulfillment. Father, in the name of Jesus, let this year of fortune 2024 answer to his name in the life of every winner, in the life of every winner, and this commission as a whole, in the name of Jesus. So shall the word be that went forth out of thy mouth, O Lord. It shall not return unto us void. It shall not return unto me void. It shall accomplish that which you please. It shall prosper in the thing. Therefore you sent it. Therefore as the word has come forth, Lord, let it be, so shall it be. Father, in the name of Jesus, let this year fortune 2024 answer to his name in the life of every winner and this commission as a whole. Lift up your voice. Pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Pray in your understanding. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Father, in the name of Jesus, let this year Fortune 2024 answer to his name in the life of heaven winner and this commission as a whole. Father, let it be in the name of Jesus as it has been declared. So shall it be in the name of Jesus for every winner and this commission as a whole. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice, lift up your hands, and give him thanks in the spirit right now. For he has answered us. When we pray, believe ye as received. Believe you are received. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Put those hands together for the Lord and please be seated. Next, we shall rise to pray. And what we do, we shall say, Father, in the name of Jesus, open up the tables of the covenant in every service this year as you take every worshiper into deeper mysteries of your word. Hebrews 9, 3 to 4 are breached. And after the second veil, the holiest of all, which are the good sir, and the hack of the covenant and the tables of the covenant. Shall we please rise to our feet, lift our voice, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, open up the tables of the covenant in every service this year as you take every worshiper into deeper mysteries of your world. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, open up the tables of the covenant in every service this year so as to take every worshippers deeper into the mysteries of your world. Lift your voice 
as we pray with this line of prayer tonight. Jesus, open up the tables of the covenant in every service this year as you take every worshiper deeper into the mysteries of your world. It is by mysteries that we command masteries. Now, Lord Jesus, we pray tonight. Open up the tables of the covenant in every service, in our Sunday worship services, in our midweek services, even at our WSF meetings, to the tables of the covenant. Open up, oh God, the tables of the covenant in every service this year, as you take every worshiper into deeper mysteries of your word. In the name of Jesus, take everyone, oh God, this year into deeper mysteries of your world as you open our eyes to the tables of the covenant in every service in the name of Jesus showing us the responsibilities to take showing us the positions to assume so as to make the most of your word and your agenda for this year in our lives. Our Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, open up the tables of the covenant in every service this year as you take every worshiper into deeper mysteries of your world. Somebody pray some more, pray with faith, pray in the name of Jesus, pray with your heart engaged this morning. Father, open up the tables of the covenant in every service this year as you take every worshiper into deeper mysteries of your world in the name of Jesus Christ show us in every service what covenant position to take in order to maximize your world for our lives this year father open up the tables of the covenant in every service every time we gather so as you take every worshiper deeper into the mysteries of your world, in the name of Jesus, thereby gain a command of mastery in every area of life, in the name of Jesus. Our Father, open up the tables of the covenant in every service this year, in the name of Jesus, as you take every worshiper into deeper mysteries of your world in the mighty name of jesus we pray for access to deeper mysteries of your world this year in every service access to deeper revelations in your world this year oh lord god open up every worshiper to the tables of the covenant in every service this year lift your voice pray in the language of the spirit Mate pori katazelo de adabash esompo telia katalo nezi adabo seketelia gadabo rakase preteli anderebo kotara baseta yishka rakepo tamiza merakumatom brodi atosa lift your voice and give God thanks our Father we thank you and blessed be your holy name in Jesus precious name we have prayed please celebrate Jesus and be seated. You are ready to rise and take the next intercession. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We shall be rising to take this prayer saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, let the prophetic agenda of this year, Fortune 2024, lead to the explosive growth of all our churches across the globe. Isaiah 54 verses 2 and 3, enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitations. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left. Please rise to your feet and lift up your voice and pray passionately this morning, saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, let the prophetic agenda of this year Fortune 2024 lead to the explosive growth of all our churches across the globe, across the entire globe. Somebody is praying this morning. Lift up your voice.
pray with passion and pray with expectation this morning. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, let the prophetic agenda of this year, Fortune 2024, let it lead to the explosive growth of all our churches across the globe. You said, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Your thoughts for us, they are thoughts of increase. Therefore, we pray that you will multiply your church. We pray that you will increase your church. Lord, within the nation, within the continent, and in the entire universe, lift up your voice. Pray, pray, pray with passion. Father, in the name of Jesus, let the prophetic agenda of this year, Fortune 2024, let it lead to the explosive growth of all our churches across the globe. Let it be said by everyone, we've never seen it in this fashion by reason of the increase that we will experience this year world over in this commission. Somebody is praying, lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. It shall be for us. As God's servant saw it at the beginning, that house from heaven that fell down and turned to splinter houses, each altar burning with the same intensity. Lift up your voice, our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus. Let the prophetic agenda of this year, of this year, Lord, Fortune 2024, let it lead to the explosive growth of all our churches across the globe. Lift your voice, pray with passion, let God hear you. He's a prayer answering God, our Father in heaven. Let it be, even as we have asked this morning, Lord, let the prophetic agenda of this year Fortune 2024 lead to the explosive growth of all our churches across the globe. Pray with your spirit. Pray with your understanding this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, let the prophetic agenda of this year, Fortune 2024, lead to the explosive growth of all our churches across the globe. Shall we lift up our voices, lift up our hands, and begin to glorify the King? Let's appreciate him for answers to this prayer. God has heard us, and God has answered. Father, we give you thanks. Blessed be your name in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Please put your hands together for the Lord and be seated. Right now in this service tonight, it is testimony time. Let's give Jesus a big, 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 big hand. Please, if you hear your name, quickly rush to the altar area to share your testimony. Mrs. Grace Zukamo. Mrs. Grace Zukamo. Joshua Elizabeth. Prince Omoni Goswell. Prince Omoni Goswell. Hallelujah. Please let all our stations shut down and take their life testimonies at their present location. Amen. Mr. Olua Shegun Akintoye. Mr. Olua Shegun Akintoye. Brother Joseph Moses. Sister Ungozi Confidence. Mr. William Bassey. William Bassey. 
you hear your name quickly rush to the altar area. Ungozi Confidence, Joseph Moses, Oluwa Shegun Akintoye, Prince Goswell, Joshua Elizabeth, and Grace Zokamo. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Please come quickly to share your testimony. Your name and straight to your testimony. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My name is Joshua Elizabeth. I want to thank God for healing me of a lump in my breast. It started on the 10th, on the 12th of October. Um, I took a vaccine because of where I work. I've never noticed that lump before in my bust, but the day I took that vaccine, that was the first day I felt that lump on my bust. So since October, it kept on developing and progressing with the aches and the pain. I didn't bother myself too much about it. I just kept on anointing it and just praying about it. So I came for Shiloh on the impartation day. I used the mantle that was blessed and I placed it on my head and I just felt a cold feeling run all through my body. And since that day, my healing has been perfected. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lump in the breast disappeared. Let's give Jesus a big, 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 big hand. Hallelujah. For 30 years he had skin disease, but via the prophetic instruction of Shiloh and the prayers, he is completely healed. All of the skin disease disappeared. Let's give Jesus a big hand. Praise the Lord, church. My name is Joseph Moses, and I have come back to give the glory to God. I made a vow to God that um, if God will do this for me, I will come to this altar to share this testimony. Um, so 2021, I embarked on a real estate project. Uh, by the grace of God, I acquired a 500 acres of land, just somewhere very close to Lagos here, yeah, five minutes drive from Lagos. Um, we moved equipment to site and uh, everything was going fine. We then applied for allocation to the state government for government to approve our project. One month, six months, one year, two years, the project, uh, the project actually became stagnated. Few days to Shilu, I remembered Papa told us that uh, we should create special time to praise God. I went into my closet, praised God, three days to Shilu, the allocation paper came out. As if God was not done, I came to, uh, when I went to pick up the allocation letter, the director looked at me and told me, Oga, we are doing you a favor. If you come back here, we'll scatter the project. I came to this altar and I reported him to God. Three days after Shiloh, I went before God to dance again. Lo and behold, you would, a friend, a very close of, a friend of mine is a friend of the governor. The governor invited me, hosted me for two days and slashed the allocation assessment from five billion naira to almost half of it. As if God was not done, as if God was not done with me, the governor gave us executive discount, 30%. I went back to the hotel room, praise God. I came back the following morning. The governor had forgotten. He said 30% and approved 35% for us. Hallelujah. My name is Mrs. Grace Zukumo. I'm here to return all the glory back to God because I'm that woman that God has helped. I've seen the mercy and the favor of God upon my life. 
First and foremost, I want to thank God for enjoy, enjoying his supernatural supply over my life and my family. I want to thank God despite the finite I God say I will eat and be satisfied and rejoice before him. Before Christmas, I was yet to pay my salary, to get my salary. By the divine favor I got alone, I was able to give out half of my salary and also keep the next 10 school fees for my children. As if that is not enough, any time I say something in my heart, before I know it, God responds. I'm here to return all the glory back to God for what God did for me in my, concerning my health. In the month of March, to be precise, 16th, I had a heart challenge that I was rushed to the hospital. And when they ran an ECG on my, on my heart, they saw that I have my cardiac insomnia. The doctor was just talking sweet language, telling me it can be treated. She placed me on Vasoprine. But I knew the challenge every day I see in the night. When it's getting dark, I, it was something else. At the end of the day, I met one of my pastor, Pastor Ikechuku Benjamin Simon. He told me that I should believe God for a new heart. I should thank God, even if the devil have destroyed, God can give me a new one. I went home thanking God, believing God. It got to a point, Holy Spirit woke me up one day and showed me the book of Joel chapter 2, verse 8b to be precise. He said, though you fall by the sword, you shall not be wounded. I woke up, I called the devil. I said, I've fallen by the sword of your general death, but I shall not be wounded. Here I am today. I went back to me. Uh, to military hospital. They ran ECG and echo tests on me. At the end of the day, they, they say my heart is perfectly okay. I am strong, hell and hearty. I'm here to return all the glory back to God. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a big, big hand of praise. Three years heart disease cleared out via the encounter with God. Let's give Jesus a bigger, bigger, bigger hand. Praise the Lord. My name is Ngozi Confidence. I'm here to return all glory to the living God for his faithfulness. For a while, I've been out of job because I wanted to change my area of, uh, of operation. I wanted to do something different from my profession. So they were all like, uh, no, 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 and all of that. But in July, I came here and I started worshiping here. The very first time I got here, I was told, or I heard from the altar that in three months time, God was going to grant our desires. Otherwise we could just go away or leave. So I held on to that and I trusted God. It was two months that God gave me my own desire. I'm here to return all the glory to him. Praise the name of the living God. If you are clapping for Jesus, make it better. Amen. Praise the Lord. My name is Prince Omi Goswe. I want to testify for what God did in my life at Shiloh 2023. I've been having um, I know for the past 10 years now, before this time. Um, at Shiloh 2023, I vowed to God that if God can heal me of the disease, that I will serve him with all my heart. Then on getting to on Friday before the impartation day when Papa said we should place on our heart on our hand on where we need God to perfect healings that if that place is a hidden place that we should place our hand on our chest on, on the right side on our right on, on our chest I then placed my hand on my chest on getting home that night as I wanted to, to take to take my bed as I checked the place the, I didn't see anything the thing was just said yeah. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Ten years I near healed at Shiloh. Let's give Jesus a big, 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 big hand. Praise the Lord. My name is Williams Bassi. I was working for a foreign firm as a service technician. For a very long time, I've been deprived of some rights. So forcefully by July, I resigned. Immediately I resigned while signing the last salary. I look at it and smile. All of them were thinking I want to shout, but I did not shout. I only planned how to spend this money, parted the money into two, then gave half a kingdom promotion project. While waiting three weeks later, an international call came in and said, Basi, would you like to come over? I said, why not? He said, you come over. As I'm saying, 
the salary they were trying to say they cannot pay or nobody can pay, three times God did. <laughs> Praise the Lord. As if that was not enough, when I got there, the project that we were supposed to embark on, three times this product came out out of one single product I went for. But God gave us divine ideas and three project, uh, products came out of the instant one we were supposed to do. I've come to return the glory to Almighty God for adding another year into my life this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now for all of those amazing testimonies in honor of Jesus, please let's rise to our feet uh, as we give Jesus the praise. Give Jesus a big, 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 big hand. Marvelous God, He has done marvelous things for me. What a powerful God! What a marvelous! He's still doing marvelous things again. Hallelujah! Marvelous! He has done marvelous things for me.
Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You have already prophesied you are going higher and higher and higher. Declare it again. I'm going higher, higher, higher in 2024. I'm going higher and higher and higher. In Jesus' wonderful name, we are prayed. As declared by God's servant a little while ago, 2024 shall be our year of fortune. Give God another big hand and please take your seat. Again, to every one of us, congratulations for the year 2024. <laughs> Say with me, Fortune 24, 2024 is my own portion. I want to count it a very great privilege in this crossover service to bring to us the word of the Lord, which is the third one, and I deeply appreciate God's servant for this. The foundation has been laid that spirituality is the foundation for our destiny. Looking at Jesus, our perfect example, in Luke chapter 2, verse 40. And the child grew and worked strong in the spirit. Our spirituality determines our material buoyancy. The deeper you are in the spirit, the fatter your destiny becomes. Spirituality is superior to intellectualism. We live in a world today that celebrates a lot of intellectualism. But I have discovered from scriptures, most successful people didn't go to school in the Bible. Many of them because they didn't have opportunity to do so. But they excelled above those who went to school because of their spirituality. I'm not saying don't go to school. I hope somebody get that right now. So I won't leave the service this morning and say, finally, finally, I'm done with schooling. I'm a spiritual man. I must make it in life. That's not what I said. They didn't have opportunity to do so, but their spirituality brought about the highest order of the intellectualism. What are we saying? Spirituality is core. Intellectualism is a plus. Spirituality is our foundation. If you are not spiritual, you are building on rubbles. And no rubbles have a future. But quickly, the word we are bringing tonight is caption. Spirituality demands genuine Personal commitment. Somebody say with me, personal commitment. Say it again, everybody. We're in 2024. Say it like you're already there. Personal commitment. If you like, call it personal responsibility. Responsibility is required for our getting into the fullness of God's plan for our lives. And that has to be personal personal. A few scriptures establishes that. First John chapter 3 verse 3. Let's go quickly. And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. So purification is a personal responsibility. The word purification is another word for sanctification. Personally purify yourself. First John chapter 5, verses 18 and 21. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. 
keep pet himself. So you have the responsibility of purifying yourself. And from this verse, you have the responsibility of keeping yourself. And that wicked one touched him not. So if you keep yourself, the evil one cannot touch you. Stop looking for who to blame for making you to fall into sin. Sin does not have power over you. That's what the scripture says. Romans chapter 6 verse 14. For sin shall no longer have dominion over you. Keep yourself. Keep yourself. Somebody say with me, I purify myself. Now say it with a sense of responsibility. Furthermore, say with me, I keep myself. And the evil one cannot touch me. Now, verse 21, 1 John chapter 5. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Keep. Keep yourself. Abstain from all appearances of evil. Flee fornication. Flee. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. These are scriptures that we no longer apply to our lives. That's why Satan has had a role into our lives. Keep yourself. Purify yourself. Keep yourself. Purify yourself. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19 all the way to 21. That was given to us as part of the foundation and the teaching earlier. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone, everyone, let everyone that nameth the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. Don't be part, but depart. Depart. But in the great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of heart, some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man, you and I, or a woman, therefore, purge himself from this. Purge himself. Say with me, I purge myself. Say it again with a sense of responsibility himself from these. So it is possible for you to purge yourself from these things. He shall be a vessel unto honor. Sanctified. So you are responsible for your sanctification and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. If any man therefore purge himself. Purge himself. Now Evil is pressing so hard on everybody, not you alone. We live in the same world. We are faced with the same temptation. We are faced with the same evil. Somebody asked me, are you tempted with fornication? Plenty. Plenty. Are you tempted with covetousness? Plenty. There is no one that is not tempted we only make choices to resist and to subdue. Temptation comes the way of all, including ministers of the gospel. Don't think we are different from you. I'm not carrying a different body than you are, that you are different from what you are carrying. We drive on the same street. We see billboards carrying all kinds of Pornography photograph. Why are you the only one tempted? Make your choice. It's a matter of choice. It's a matter of choice. Did you hear that even Jesus was tempted in all points, yet without sin? He was tempted with fornication. He was tempted with drunkenness. He was tempted with many things and by many things. So no one is exempted from temptation, but not all fall into temptation. It's a matter of choice. Evil is not closer to one person than the other. The mystery of iniquity does work. Satan is at work every day. He knocks at the door of everyone. 
Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, is at work. Only he that now let it. Can you see that? Only he that let it. Say with me, I will not let it. I didn't hear you very well. Say it with a sense of responsibility. Only he who now let it will let. That is, if you don't let Satan assess, he cannot force himself on you until he be taken out of the way. So those who are taken out of the way simply let it. They allowed it. God has given you and I the power to resist, to say no to sin if you want to say no to it. Sin is not closer to you than it is closer to me. It's a matter of choice. Jesus was tempted. He refused to fall. It will interest you to also, to also know that just as we have the mystery of iniquity, we have the mystery of righteousness. So when you are confronted with the mystery of iniquity, you can confront it with the mystery of righteousness. First Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. You are not falling into sin because sin is greater than you. You are falling because you allowed it. You let it. You can now take on the mystery of godliness to confront the mystery of iniquity. Somebody say amen. amen. Say louder amen. Amen. The scripture tells us, evil shall bow before good. The wicked are the gates of the righteous. And that's in Proverbs chapter 14 verse 19. That is to say, no matter the evil coming your way, if you stand in good, the good word of the Lord, it will bow before you. Please, let us know tonight, evil is not new. There is nothing new under the sun. In the days of Noah, there was wickedness. There was sin. To the extent that God said he would destroy the whole world. But in chapter 6 verse 9 of Genesis, Noah stood as a just man. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. It does not matter how many people are doing evil. You can be exempted. You can make a choice not to join them. Somebody say with me, I refuse to join them. I didn't hear you. Say it again very loud. In the days of Enoch, there were evil people. In the days of Lot, there were evil people. Lot was described as the righteous. Second Peter chapter 2, verses 7 and 8. That righteous man, and he delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy confession of the wicked. Look at verse 8. For that righteous man dwelling among them, in sin and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. So all around us today, there are evil. They are vexing us. They are tempting us to join them. Say it again, I will not join them. <laughs> Evil is not new. Let no young person here say, you see, in our generation, there are a lot of, a lot of girls who tempt young men. It's not true. You are not the first to be tempted. We were at your youthful age before. We didn't fall by the help of God. You will not fall by the help of God. Make your choice. The Holy Spirit has given to us the power, but you need to engage the power to subdue the evil of our time. Purge yourself. Cleanse yourself. Save yourself. What do we mean by spirituality? God's servant gave us a lot of definition. Beko is 
walking in the fear of the Lord. Walking in the fear of God. In the days of Job, there were evil and wicked men. But Job feared the Lord. How? He eschewed evil. He was not chewing evil. He was eschewing evil. He was, they were pushing evil into his mouth. He was eschewing it. He was spitting it out of his mouth. Today we have a lot of devices by which people push evil to us. Modern method for making people to commit sin. Pornography is there. Many believers, unfortunately, are victims. They have it in their telephone. In the middle of the night, they shut the door. Look this way, look that way. Nobody's saying it is well. There are many believers today who have wine, hot drinks in their fridge, in the fridge in the bedroom. Nobody saying this is well. He opens the fridge, sit and say, settle down. It's not bad. It's only 10% alcohol. And from there, Satan moves you to take 50% until you become a drunkard. Some years back, during Christmas like this, or Christmas that just passed, some fellow brought me um, some hamper. And inside it, all kinds of hot drinks. Ha. And they put my name. <laughs> Pastor, so, 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 so. Ha. I said, these people must be very deliberate. <laughs> so I took a pen and wrote them, we are not wine babas like you. Get your wine back. Somebody says, but that is too rough. If I didn't answer them that way, when next they are coming, they will come with double of it. And then they will say, oh, no wonder. The way they preach, do you see their eyes red? They must have been drinking before they came to church. That's what we are talking about. Purge yourself. Resist evil. Don't allow avenues of evil around you. What you will not eat, don't smell. Don't smell it. Don't let evil survive around you because what you don't reprove, you will soon approve. You know, the Bible tells us we should reprove the works of darkness. Reprove it. Reprove it. You see, you have to be extreme in your righteous work if you don't want Satan to catch up with you. You have to be extreme. As a young student, young believer, Four of us in the hotel room. A young man brought a girl into the room one day. And they started to be fornicating in my presence. Ah. I said, in the name of Jesus. I stop you right now. I stop you. Somebody says, why are you like that? The right he has to the room, I have to the room. If you want to pollute the room, I want to make the room righteous. If I didn't do that, when next is coming, he will come with two girls. One for himself, one for me. This is how gradually evil is creeping in into the believer's life. Keep yourself. So may I keep myself. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. I had God summoned one day, shining testimony when he was, before ministry, when he went on vacation job somewhere. He said, one man brought a bill where he was working. And he loaded it with all kinds of fake receipts, fake claims. And he stood there. He said, sir, this is not true. I saw this man. This man didn't travel anywhere. <laughs> This is the order of righteousness that kept us in the past. We live in a world today, the world of compromise. And gradually we are saying it doesn't matter. And little by little, 
the enemy is creeping into the church until we are no longer speaking against evil. And that in ultimate is getting the church weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker by the day. When sin stepped into the camp of the children of Israel, the Lord told Joshua, I have left and I'm not coming back again. Until you take away their cost, I'm not coming back. Why do we need the fear of the Lord? It, because it is the beginning of wisdom. The God order of wisdom. Psalm 119 verse 9. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10. God's servant quoted all of that to us before. It is through wisdom that we can reign in life. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 15 and 16. By me kings reign and princes decree justice. And he that loves wisdom loves life. And he that wisdom is wisdom loves dead. As in the case of Judas. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 33. He that loveth me loves life. He that loves me loves life. Even Christ, the living word, who was given the Holy Spirit without measure, had to be committed personally to a sanctified life. John 17, 19. He had to be committed personally. And for their sake, I, Jesus, sanctify myself. Somebody say to me, I sanctify myself. <laughs> say it again. Now, let's quickly run through a few examples in scriptures. Number one, Abraham. He refused to take bribe. Genesis 14, 18 to 20. I have lifted my hands that I will not take anything that is not mine. Even to the shoe latchet, I will not take anything that is your own. See, the reason why we don't have our own is because we are taking what is not our own. Don't touch what is not yours. It is counterfeit. Pastors, don't touch church money. One day, somebody came to me in my office and he said he wanted to pay his tithe. Uh, I said, but you pay tithe in the church. He said, I feel I should write your name. Uh, what a temptation. As he was talking, I called the accountant. Somebody here wants to pay tithe. Please take him. Let him follow you. Before he sit down and write my name and I start rejoicing that God has buttered my bread. Did I, have not, did I not have need? Plenty of need. What was the time? Two million. About 15 years ago. You know what? Two million would be like, but don't. But I will not touch what is not mine. In your place of work, don't touch what is not yours. Joseph didn't touch what was not his own. God gave him his own. Abraham did not touch what is not his own. The following chapter in verse 1, after he rejected that, the Lord appeared unto him and said, I am your exceeding great reward. You know, counterfeit will come before original will surface. Don't touch what is not your own. What about Moses? He chose to suffer affliction than to enjoy the pleasure for a season. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 24 to 29. He will not take what is not his own. He realized that he belonged to the children of Israel. He was to be enjoying what they enjoyed in Egypt. But he chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy pleasure of sin for a season. Pleasure of sin is for a season. Is for a season. You may be afflicted for a while for, for refusing to take what is not your own. Today in church, we don't know how to refuse evil again. We take it. We just take it now. Take it, everybody's taking it. You are not everybody. Everybody is everybody, but you are not everybody. And we've had people say, if you can't beat them, join them. Don't join them. When you join them, you are disjoined from God. Look at Joseph. He chose to live a godly life. A woman, his master's wife, came and said, here am I, free of charge. Just touch me. 
touch any part of me, Joseph refused. Where others were infusing, Joseph was refusing. To the extent that this woman pressed so hard on him every day. Every day. When Joseph couldn't get away of escape, he decided to lose his dress than to lose his destiny. He was castigated. He was wrongly accused. He went to prison for it, but he didn't mind. Prison time is only for a while. It cannot erase your destiny. His destiny emerged on the account of righteousness. Listen to this. Every time you have been tempted, it is not about bodily pleasure. It's about the oil on your head. Satan wants to take that oil away from you. It's about the crown on your head. He wants to steal that crown away from you. Look at what happened to Adam. It's not a matter of pleasure. It's a matter of they must be driven away from the garden into the wilderness. Every time you touch sin, you're on your way to the wilderness. It may not be immediately, but one day you'll find yourself there. Sin is not about pleasure. It is Satan's instrument to take you away from the favor that God has planned for you. Remember, Fortune 2024. Keep yourself. Keep yourself. What about Daniel? He proposed in his heart. Please find the story of Joseph in Genesis chapter 39 from verses 9 to 24. And 42 verse 18. Daniel proposed in his heart not to defile himself. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. Everybody was eating, eating and eating. But Daniel proposed in his heart. I cannot propose for you. You cannot propose for me. That he will not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. Everybody is taking it. I will not take it. Everybody is getting fat by it. No, I prefer to be lean. I prefer to be lean. I will not touch it. I will not eat it. They say, what about wine? They say, our fathers have told us not to take wine with them. If you don't refuse it, you end as a refuse. At the end of the day, he excelled all of them. Daniel chapter 6, verses 4 and 5. Look at the New Testament. Paul the Apostle. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. He said, ye are witnesses, and God also. How holily and justly and unbeamably we behave ourselves among you that believe. Godly behavior. Unfortunately today, many people don't believe in that. Our sanctification is not only in our spirit, but spirit, soul, and body. First Thessalonians chapter 5 from verses 23 to 24. Sanctification is spirit, soul, and body. Even our bodies to reflect that we are children of God. We are bought with a price. Don't use your body anyhow. Don't appear anyhow. Don't you see how our spiritual parents appear? You are watching your children wearing dress that is showing their lap. Did you see that from our mothers? Did you see that from our fathers? Be ye followers of me as I'm a follower of Christ. Somebody say it doesn't matter. That's why those matters are entering into our lives. You say people are chasing you because you look chaseable. You look chaseable. Your appearance looks chaseable. There are believers, when you see them, you see sanctity. You don't move close to them. You don't know them before, but you start calling them brother, sister, pastor. Because they look like one. I'm not saying that physical appearance is what determines our spirituality, but our deep spirituality we reflect in our soul, in our conversation, in our disposition, and even our physical appearance. Today, too many pollutions in the church. Find young men, young believers. You can't point out that they are believers because of the way they appear. Put your ring here, put another one here. Do their hair anyhow? Did you learn that from Jesus? Jesus didn't dress like unbelievers to win unbelievers. The anointing on him was so strong 
They couldn't resist it. We have replaced those material appearances to replace the unction that should convict sinners. Let's get back. I walk holily, Paul say, before you all. No one can live a sanctified life by accident. It's a product of continuous personal commitment to do so. Personal commitment to do so. Exercise thyself unto righteousness, unto godliness. First Peter, first Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. Paul the apostle said, I put my body under. I put my body, I discipline myself. First Corinthians chapter 9 verse 24 to 27. I put myself under. I exercise my conscience. Acts chapter 24 verse 16. Let's get back. There is no modern Bible, no modern Christianity, no modern spirituality. We want to see the fire that Elijah saw. Let's get back to spirituality. We want to see the fire that John the Baptist brought. Let's get back to the subject of spirituality. We want to see live like Jesus, whose appearance was driving away demons. And like Paul the Apostle, whom they describe as the God, has come down in the likeness of man. Let's get back to the root. Let's get back deep into spirituality to possess and reclaim our world. In the year 2024, you will not drop in spirituality. How many of us desire this order of spirituality? I'd like you to rise to your feet, please, in one minute. And cry out your soul, sanctify me, Lord. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Help me to sanctify. Help me to purge myself. Help me to clean myself. Help me to purify myself. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Raise your voice and pray, somebody. Sanctify yourself. Purify yourself. Keep yourself from evil. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' precious name. Please get seated and give God a big hand. For the blessings of the world, one more time, shall we give the Lord a big, big clap of praise? Shortly we shall be rising to pray. And this time we are saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, and grace every winner to take spiritual responsibility this year, resulting in ear-tingling testimonies. A stronger and better, amen. amen. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Shall we please rise as we raise our voices this morning, saying, Our Father, in the name of Jesus, and grace every winner to take spiritual responsibility this year, resulting in ear tingling testimonies. Everyone, everywhere, raise your voice across the nations as we demand of the Father for engracement for every winner to take spiritual responsibility this year, resulting in ear tingling testimonies. Raise your voices as we pray this morning. We are praying with faith. We are praying with passion. We are praying with fervency of spirit. Demanding of the Father for engracement for every winner to take spiritual responsibility this year. Resulting in ear tingling testimony. Raise your voice as we make this demand. This prayer concerns you. It concerns me. It concerns all of us. In this year of fortune 2024, our Father, and grace every winner, old and young, male and female, across the nations of the earth, everywhere we are found, and grace every winner to take spiritual responsibility this year, resulting in ear tingling testimonies in the name of. But Jesus the Christ, the grace to embrace and prioritize spirituality in the name of Jesus the Christ, the grace to live a life.
that pleases you, walking in the fear of the Lord, our Father, and grace every winner to take spiritual responsibility this year, resulting in ear tingling testimonies, testimonies that eyes have not seen nor ears heard. Our Father will demand for grace in the name of Jesus. Someone raise your voice and show your brain your demanding fervently tonight you're making the demand on the father you're praying in the spirit you're praying in your understanding in the name of jesus for it is the lord that walketh in all but to will and to do of his good pleasure i labor more than them all yet not i but the grace of god that was at work in me now raise your voice as a power of demand in the spirit Praying in the Holy Ghost, a Sephaniane, a Rakatavarada, a Teria, a Reke Beneketosa, a Sepreketa Maria Nenetana, a Raketoska, a Perian de Nadava, Mereco Sotania, Raketes Catania, and grace every winner to take spiritual responsibility this year, resulted in ear tangling testimonies of Father, a Matamanane, a Ria Catania, with your hands to him let us appreciate him and let us give him all the glory our father thank you blessed be your name in jesus precious name we have prayed give the lord a big big clap of praise and please be seated in a moment we are going to rise again to pray and this time we're saying father in the name of jesus let there be an outbreak of the supernatural in all our services this year, resulting in the invasion of multitudes. Somebody believes, say loud, amen. amen. Acts of the 5, verse 12 and verse 14, paraphrase, and many signs and wonders were wrought among the people, and believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes, both of men and women. Shall we rise on our feet? this morning across the globe and let's pray this prayer from the depth of our hearts father in the name of jesus let there be an outbreak of the supernatural in all our services this year resulting in the invasion of multitudes lift your voice and pray that prayer from the depth of your heart our father and our god in the name of jesus we are asking for the outbreak of the supernatural miracles everywhere in every service at every gathering lord we are asking for signs for wonders for diverse miracles to be wrought in our midst in every service resulting in the invasion of multitudes are you praying that prayer pray from the depth of your heart pray with faith in your heart pray with confidence in your god my father in the name of jesus let there be an outbreak of the supernatural in all our services this year resulted in the invasion of multitudes in the name of jesus let there be oh god the manifestation of the supernatural in every service no ordinary service no casual service every time we are gathered let there be manifestations of the supernatural in the name of jesus according to your word it said my speech and preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom but the demonstration of the spirit and power let that be our experience in every service this year manifestation of signs and wonders diverse miracles in the name of jesus lift your voice and pray from the depth of your heart pray with faith in your heart pray with confidence in your god my father in the name of jesus let there be an outbreak of the supernatural in all of our services every single service let there be signs and wonders every single service let there be diverse miracles every single service let there be ear tingling testimonies in the name of jesus we are asking oh god for the outbreak of the supernatural in all of our services this year resulted in the invasion of multitudes lift your voice and pray from the depth of your heart let god hear 
the voice of your intercession. He said that signs and wonders were wrought among the people and multitudes, both of men and women, were added unto them. Lord, by the manifestation of the supernatural, let multitudes be added, male and female, in every congregation, in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice, pray passionately, lift your voice, pray wholeheartedly, engage your faith and engage your heart. My Father and my God, we are asking of you tonight, let there be an outbreak of the supernatural in all of our services this year, resulting in the invasion of multitudes, multitude drafting miracles. This is what we desire. This is what we are asking you for. Multitude drafting signs, multitude drafting wonders. This is what we are asking of you. Lift your voice and express that desire in the language of the Holy Ghost. Lift your hand, lift your voice, glorify God. Father, thank you. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Give Jesus a big hand and please you may be seated. Very shortly we shall be rising up again to pray. And when we rise, we shall be praying and saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, strengthen your servant, the apostle over this commission, to pursue the 2024 prophetic agenda with undeniable impact. Shout a louder amen. In Psalm 89, verses 28 and 21, he said, I found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him, with whom my hand shall be established. My arm also shall strengthen him. Are you ready to pray? Rise up on your feet and pray with zest. Pray, saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, strengthen your servant, the apostle over this commission to pursue the 2024 prophetic agenda fortune 2024 with undeniable impact pray from the depth of your heart father in the name of jesus strengthen your servant spiritually physically mentally lord strengthen your servant the apostle over this commission to pursue the 2024 prophetic agenda with undeniable proofs undeniable impact in diverse dimensions father in the name of jesus strengthen your servant strengthen your servant spiritually strengthen your servant lord mentally strengthen your servant physically strengthen your servant oh god the apostle over this great commission to pursue the 2024 prophetic agenda with undeniable impact. Pray from the depth of your heart. Lord, we decree no concern of any type. In the name of Jesus, strengthen your servant. Strengthen your servant. Strengthen your servant. Lord, to pursue the 2024 prophetic agenda with undeniable impact impact in diverse areas in the lives of your people law to prove that you have given that word every word you gave through him law you have proved it lord you have brought it to fulfillment in the name of jesus strengthen your servant lord strengthen your servant strengthen your servant the apostle over this commission Law to pursue this prophetic agenda 2024 with undeniable impact. Lift up your voice, pray from the depth of your heart, pray, pray with zeal, pray with us, 
Kanto rombedia shatandara balabolia agala bala o kondolom broli aklanda randa losia takata. Lord, in the name of Jesus, strengthen your servant. Strengthen your servant. Strengthen your servant. The way you strengthen Moses at one twenty, Lord, his eyes was not dim. Neither is natural strength abated. Strengthen your servant, O God, as he pursued this prophetic agenda. Lord, let there be undeniable impact. Undeniable impact. Pray with us. Pray with the Spirit. Pray in your understanding. Kantorosia, Lagadayaga, Okolobolon, Malamborolos, Agala, Klaton Toromia, Naglamborando, Seke Koromia Gala. Columbus, Adan Lando Mialanda, Clato Colombolo, Shake Take a Father, in the name of Jesus, strengthen your servant, strengthen your servant, strengthen your servant. Lord, the apostle of this commission to pursue the 2024 prophetic agenda with undeniable impact. Are you sure you are praying? Pray your understanding, pray in the Holy Ghost, pray your understanding. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Lokorobia, Lagadayaga, Klaporondo Soto, Ogobolo, Balatakandorombia, Talandoroba, Robiaga, Blaporondo Susia. Wave your hands and give him praise. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Shout a louder, Amen. amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Please be seated. Somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. Right now in this service, it's time for us to bring out and worship the Lord with our New Year worship offering. It's offering time. Offering time. Put your wonderful hands together for the Lord. It's a privilege for us on this first day of the year to give upwards to the God who is never in need. Remember what to do with the first has a lot to do with the rest. As we give upwards this first day and the first few hours of the year 2024, financial security becomes our portion. Let your amen be a stronger one. Therefore, properly package your worship seat right now. Label it properly. Make sure it's well packaged in case you want to write a check for your seat today. Do so in honor of your local assembly. For those of us right here in Canaan land, you do so in favor of Faith Tabernacle, Canaan land. Those of us in other locations across the nations of the earth, please do so in honor of your local assembly. You can also give in cash properly and well packaged and clearly labeled. You can as well take advantage of any of our electronic giving platforms. Please check the screen and follow the instructions thereby. Praise God. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7, the scripture says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Money is a seed, and giving is sowing. As you and I give upwards this early morning, we are sowing financial seed. Your harvest shall not be lost in Jesus' name. Please rise up on your feet. Take your seed in your hand. Lift up your money seed unto God. Thank Him first and foremost that on this first day of the year, you have seed, money seed in your hand to give, to worship God. Thank Him for accepting your seed and glorify His name because your harvest is sure. Somebody's thanking the Lord. Wave your seat to the Lord. Present it to him right now. Glorify his name and worship. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please keep your seat lifted up wherever you may be globally right now. Father, in Jesus' name, we have come with money seed to sow into the kingdom earth on this first day of the year. Let our seed be acceptable. As this seed leaves your hand today, it's waiting for you as harvest tomorrow. Yeah. 
Therefore, with this seed in your hand that you are saying today, no more financial tension. So shall it be. While others are saying there's a casting down for you throughout the year 2024 and beyond, you and I shall be declaring that she is a lifting up. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. A loud and believing amen. amen. Please be seated, cast your seat joyfully, and the faith tabernacle choir shall be leading us as we do so.
Lord, a big hand of praise. Amen. The Lord sent a word into Jacob. He transformed him to a nation. That's how powerful the word of the Lord is. One word can secure for you an other turnaround that 50 years of labor and skill may never accomplish. Something must have dropped for you tonight. May you treasure those treasures. Amen. God's word is defined as a pair of a great price. Job defined it as nothing on earth compares in value with it. Not the good of offer. The treasure therein is not found in the land of the living. So they are heavenly treasures. May you live to value the treasures of the world. 
One word came to me and said to me eternally. <laughs> you heard it too many times. You may be tired of hearing it, but I'm not tired of saying it. The impact is forever. Matthew 6.33 The pillar of my life and destiny that has never failed. Never failed. Enter into covenant with that, September 12th, 1976. I'm still triumphing in the things I saw till now. Paklenko Koko Paneko. Now, watch. Almost everybody in the world is singing Matthew 3 today. Almost everybody in the world is singing Matthew 3 today. From a little room. On a quiet day. Pukotrano go. I was in the room when he showed me prosperity. You were there with me. 41 years ago. It changed the face of Christianity in this place. Forever. Compound revelation. Random revelation. Stand in revolution. Treasure the treasures of the world. You secure an enviable future. Treasure the treasures of the world and you secure an enviable future. Pokonka kredika alopringolala. We have been called into the realm of fortune. May you never miss your place in it. Amen. If we would do what he says to do, he abides faith, he cannot deny himself, he will fulfill his word. God is more faithful than you and I. You can't be faithful to your part and then he denies himself. In the precious name of Jesus, the word fortune 2024 will not be a chorus in your life, Amen. but a reality Amen. that everyone around you can see Amen. and feel Amen. and touch. Amen. Lift up your two hands. Grace to value the treasures of your world are receiving. <laughs> Through diverse encounters in my private devotions, as I hear the word in the church, as I study your, your word in my private life. Lord, grace to treasure the treasures of the world and not trust the treasures of the kingdom. I receive it right now in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand and get seated please. Now very quickly we'll be unveiling the treasures of Kingdom stewardship, unveiling the treasures embedded in kingdom stewardship. <laughs> Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Exodus 4 22 and 23. And let my son go that he may serve me. If you won't let my son go, I will kill your son because I vow to free my son. For anyone who is out to serve God in the year 2024, <laughs> God will clear anybody on your path Amen. to bring you into fortune. Amen. And then he said, and I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. <laughs> when you are out to serve, you become a candidate for favor. You are out to serve, you become a candidate for favor. <laughs> I, Exodus 3, 21, and Exodus chapter 12, and verse 36. And the Lord gave them favor. Favor is not free. It carries a cost. <laughs> Among the fundamental cost of favor is kingdom stewardship. Not kingdom show, kingdom stewardship. Kingdom stewardship. Kingdom value 
adding to worship. Kingdom not make them see me kind of service. <laughs> ah. Everything is in it. Everything that life demands is in it. He remember this promise to Abraham, his servant. So our covenant father is defined and described a servant. And he's so clean to understand because whosoever you yourself to obey, his servants he has whom you obey. Romans 6.16. 6, Every word that comes from the mouth of God, Abraham ran with it. Every word. Every word. Instant response. No dragging of feet. A core servant. Get out of the country, he departed. <laughs> Circumcised of the mayborn, he began. As soon as God left. Take your son, only son I see, in the night. And he woke up early in the morning and carried him. <laughs> I mean, he was a diehard servant of God. So Abraham's fortune was not free. Hearken unto me, all ye that follow after righteousness. Look to Abraham, your father. I called him and I blessed him. <laughs> and you know, he blessed him on the basis of his servanthood. You have obeyed my voice, I swear my blessing on you. He turned his wilderness to Eden. He turned this desert to the garden of the Lord. Come and say fortune. On the basis of stewardship. On the basis of stewardship. On the basis of stewardship. It is fortune that makes a man exclaim, Who am I? My father's house. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Who am I to be? I'm not worth of any of these things. Who am I? That's what they call fortune. Who am I? It goes beyond you. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Abraham had an army. Not a, not a guard. Army. Proper army. Proper army. They begged the man Isaac, don't overrun us. You are mightier than us. That an army is stronger than the nation. Ame Korande Karada. In Plan Gola, servant, servanthood is key to working in the realm of fortune. Servanthood is free, key. Thou shalt serve the Lord thy God, and he shall what? Bless thy bread and thy water. And the blessing make it rich and have no sorrow. Amen. Rich bread, rich water. Hmm? <laughs> Glory to God. And I will take sinners away from you. The laborers are few. I want to keep you fit. I will keep you fit. Sir, there are many people here. You will never know the meaning of sickness again in your life. <laughs> that is 2024 marks the end of the torture and the torment yes. of sickness and disease in your family. Yes. Yes. Every ambassador of Christ entitled to healthy living. Healthy living. A faithful ambassador is health. Proverbs 13, 17. And when you are born again and you begin to reconcile the world back to God in your still worship, you are an ambassador of Christ and you are entitled to healthy living. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17 to 21. You are entitled to healthy living, healthy, healthy living. A peku tagrelo, a grand tagurado, the fortune of divine health has descended on your life. My God. And the number of his days, I will fulfill. Not left to circumstance. No plague. COVID-19 nonsense. COVID-20 stupid. The number of his days, I will fulfill. Leave that to me. Leave that to me. President is going to hit the wall in some dimension we have never seen. But serving God will exempt you gloriously. Because he said, with long life, it will satisfy you because you, you have set your love on him. The name of his days, I will fulfill. No one here will die young. No one will bury their children here. Even in old age, you still be fruitful. Even in old age, you still be fruitful. That's how much fortune 
lies in kingdom stewardship. How much fortune is embedded in it? If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Job 36 verse 11. Hmm. This year marks the end of all forms of pressures on your life. Yeah. Serving God launches the believer into the realm of pleasures. Pleasures. Zero pressure. Pleasures. Zero pleasures. Uh, pressure. In the precious name of Jesus, this hour marks the end of every form of pressure on your life. You say, is that possible? My God, it is super possible. <laughs> it's as possible as breathing. This church has lived off pressure. Off, off pressure. Permanently so. Openly so. Gloriously so. For this number of years, this church has lived off the realm of pressures. Off the realm. We've never gathered in a meeting to say, how do we go about this? How do we step forward here? I said in one minute, I said, we have not come to be more failure. We have come to advance success. We are constantly advancing success. Zero pressure. Zero pressure. In the name of Jesus Christ, the days of pressure are over in your life. Yeah. Moses, the servant of God, was a living wonder. Was a living wonder. At 120, his eyes were not dim. His natural force was not abated. At 120, there was no prophet that ever rose in Israel like unto Moses. Unusual man. <laughs> God had to bury him. Oh my God. <laughs> the good thing about this is. This. As you make this year your service year, your kingdom value adding service year, every favor embedded in stewardship will start answering in your life. Amen. Somebody will let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. There is no sedan tight believer non-valuating believer that can operate in the realm of fortune, that cannot operate in the realm of fortune. Forget it. I can tell you the true raw truth. Raw truth, I'm sent to you. There is no sedan believer doing nothing believer that wants to walk in fortune. <laughs> favor is entreated. And it's fearful favor we call fortune. Psalm 102 verse 13 to 15. It has been said over and again here. <laughs> Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. For thy servants take pleasure in the stones of Zion and pay for the dust thereof. Therefore, the heathens will fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth. Thy glory. Fearful favor. King humbly favor. Aprekekekarado. King humbly favor. King humbly favor. Favor that does not require a king to deliver. Favor that has no cognizance for kingship or royalship. <laughs> favor wrong from God. Nobody could have voted Joseph in. Favor enthroned him. How would the king bow down and worship Daniel? A captain? No. People change the story. You don't know what you are missing when you limit your life to a man. Come on, stop that. There is no human hand on this commission today. That if this man were not there, there is no such man, living or dead. You limit your destiny by putting the pocket of a man. A man is today, is of tomorrow. But God is there forever. Hallelujah. He can arrange anybody on your part, okay? But there's nobody on your part 
that can deliver to you what God's favor will deliver. Come on now. Watch. Fearful favor will start attending to your life. Yeah. You will hear your name from place you least expected in your life. Yeah. You'll be wondering how, how, how. How can you be looking for a solution in the, in the nation and you're looking for it in the prison? And somebody's in the prison, who knows? If he, if he knows the answer, why was he in the prison? <laughs> Amen. It doesn't fly. But when God steps in, everything turns. In the name of Jesus, your stewardship will provoke fearful favor this year. Yeah. You won't sit down tired for your hand this year. Yeah. You will be actively engaged in advancing the kingdom of God. Yeah. And God will continue to advance your life at the same time. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Mm. The reason why many people get weak and weary in the process is that they want it now and now. It must be now or it's not true. Mark chapter 4 verse 27 and 28. We had this parable here. Let's start from verse 25 or thereabout. And he said, so it's the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground. Investment. And she will sleep and rise night and day. And the seed she will spring and grow up. He knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. First the blade, then the air, and then the full corn in the air. It comes in a process. It comes in a process. He delivers little by little. Little by little. Let it destroy the individual. Little by little. Let the way become heavier than you can be. At. Little by little by little by little. Little by little. No matter who you are. When you start with a beginner. And it's little by little on your way up there. Little by little. That is what this crazy generation that's in a hurry can't, ha can't handle it. Little by little, no, no, I want it now. How to make a billion in one second. Little by little by little. By little, by little by little. This prosperity ministry, by little and little. 18,000 plus to 50,000 plus, by little and little. Then to 500, a jump. By little and little. <laughs> then on and on, then one million. Little and little, and then we'll be a million in a second. Little by little. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. James 5 4. The Bible says, Behold, no, the husband man, please. The husband man waited for the precious fruits of the earth and he has long patience for it until he's obtained both the early, the former and the latter rain. What verse is that? James 5 what? Can I have that please? He has long patience till he receives both the former and the later rain. Thank you, Jesus. Now, 5 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husband man waited for the precious fruit of the earth and has long patience for it until he receives the early and the later rain. Patience wins the race in stewardship. Matthew 24, verse 45 to 47. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, wise, whom his Lord will make ruler over his household that to give them their meat in their due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. He must be met on duty when his reward shows up. 
he must be met on duty when his work shows up. When they tell you, it will make him ruler over all his goods. <laughs> so you can't tell when it's coming, but it's coming. I say it's coming. He said, at the end he shall speak. Do a tell is wait, 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 wait. Stay on duty, stay on duty. Keep your hands on the plow. Don't, don't withdraw it. At the end he shall speak. That is the mystery that gets people weary. When will they come? When you are due? When am I due? When he says you are due? <laughs> Amen. When your cloud is full, your rain must fall. People are not willing to feed their cloud. They want the rain to fall. The rain won't fall on the cloud is filled. In the precious name of Jesus, you have many filling of the cloud this year. Amen. As you fill the cloud and it is a damn poor of fortune, you fill it again and it's another damn poor of fortune. Every single month of this year, you'll be singing songs of fortune. Amen. Nobody believe that. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. In Luke chapter 19, verse 12 and 13, he said to them, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. That's Christ talking about himself. Then he called his ten servants, delivered them his ten pounds, and said unto them, Occupy the... That's the rule of the game where many of us fail. Occupy till I come. I'm coming home. But stay on duty till I come. By the time he came, he met only three. Seven have wandered away. He met only three. The first one came and said, I've met ten more from the one you gave me. Well done. How done authority over ten cities? Second one came and said, I made five more. Have the authority over five cities. The things in your hand will soon be turned to cities. <laughs> Through consistent, steadfast still worship. Consistent and steadfast still worship. <laughs> consistent. The second one came and said, I made five. I've, I thought you had five cities. The third one came and said, I just buried you. I know you are not still man. I know you won't give me anything out of it. Where are the seven? Lost. Lost. Only 20% made anything out of it. 70% lost. 70% nowhere to be found. 1% got judgment. That's how it is today, still worshipful. People are plenty in church waiting for God to serve them. They are out to use God. They are out to use God. Oh God, my tea. Oh God, my butter. Oh God, my body. Oh God, my shoe. Oh God, my shirt. They are out to use God. Oh God, come. They say what? Bring me my water. Bring me my butter. Come and bath for me. They are just out begging God to no avail. You can't beg God out of his word. Thou shalt serve, he shall bless. <laughs> Thou shalt serve, I will take something away from the midst of you. You shall serve, the number of your days I will fulfill. <laughs> you shall serve, you spend your days in prosperity, your years in pleasure. You shall serve, I will turn your wilderness to Eden and your desert to the end of the Lord. Isaiah 51, 1 to 3. Every change of story in the Bible is domiciled in service. It's triggered by service. You know in the natural, it is been in service in terms of promotion. You can't promote it in the company where you're not serving. Your promotion is premised on your productive service. Productive service. Productive service. Not just being present. You are productively engaging. Productively adding value. Productively adding value. That is where our change of story is rooted. Can I hear your amen? amen. Somebody's changing level here. Somebody's changing level here. May your stewardship change level this year. 
May your commitment change level this year. May serving God become more delightful for you this year than ever before. If you believe that, let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. There is this bamboo tree that I was sharing about some time back. Now, the first four years, it's only about three meters to three and a half meters tall. It's supposed to be a commercial tree. But in the fifth year, it goes to 92 feet. 92 feet. I'm sort of about three feet, four feet for the first four years. But in the fifth year, it's full value surges. Only in the fifth year. Now we are very close to the cocoa uh, tree here. It takes about three to four years to start fruiting. But when it does, the next 40, 50 years is still bearing fruit. Tomato grew yesterday, we are finished it today. <laughs> but cocoa keeps producing the next 40 years. Stay on, my friend. Stay on. Stay on. Receive grace to stay on. Receive grace to stay on. Your cocoa plant is getting ready. You're about hitting it. 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 Let me hear your loudest amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. And you know why we get also weary? We think that God's prosperity agenda is to meet our family needs. Ah. And in thy seed, how many are seeds of Abraham here? Shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So every seed of Abraham has a global gene inside him. There's a global gene inside you seeking for expression. There's a global gene. You say me at this time. Abraham was 75 when God told him. <laughs> ah, there's a global gene inside you crying for expression. Crying for expression. Crying for expression. Amen. There's something about you that is beyond you. Yes. God put it there. Every child of God is the seed of Abraham. And in his seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Be blessed. Your place will not be taken by another man. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? There are many, many breadwinners in this place. I mean national breadwinners. People that nations will wait on for their supplies. You are one of them. Let me hear your loudest amen. I'm trying to help you see the enormity of your future from scriptures. Of all born of women, there is none as great as John the Baptist, but he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Matthew 11, 11. <laughs> Every child of God carries a greater potential than Abraham. Come on now. <laughs> than Moses. Than Job. Than Isaac. Of all born of women, there was none as great as John the Baptist. But that is least in the kingdom is greater than he. Christ said, the work that I do shall ye do also. And greater work than this shall ye do. Now, his work is still speaking after 2,000 years. Abba, wah. His work is still speaking. His word is still speaking. That's how great our destiny is in redemption. You will not sell off. Amen. This also of his birthright <laughs> for temporal things. And he wept and wept, couldn't get it back. You won't sell off your birthright. Stewardship is gateway to our enlargement in the kingdom. Stewardship is gateway to our enlargement in the kingdom. That's the whole essence of Luke chapter 19, the parable of the talents. Have the authority over 10 cities. And then he left the money with him. He came back again. Okay, I've added 50 more cities. Came again. Okay, I've added to you two nations. Came again. I've added to you five nations. Came again. Now a continent. Came again. Two continents. <laughs> again, five continents. Again, all the continents. 
is gateway to our enlargement, unending enlargement in the kingdom. Lift up your right hand. Jesus, engrace me for commitment. With commitment. For greater commitment to kingdom advancement endeavors all through 2024. I refuse to sell off my birthright of global impact. So help me, Jesus. I refuse to sell off <laughs> my global heritage in the Abrahamic covenant. So help me, Jesus. 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 Give the Lord a big hand of praise. This is why our adventure in the kingdom is not is, 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 is a marathon, not a sprint. It's a thing for life, not for a why. Not to solve one problem. It's to make you a problem solver to your world. Can I hear your amen? amen. But one cannot be any more steadfast than he knows that his labor in the Lord is not in vain. 1 Corinthians 15, 10. Um, 1558. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abiding the Lord, for as much as ye know, you can't be more sober than you know, as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, for as much as ye know, 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 that God is not unrighteous to forget my works and my labor of love, as long as ye know. Your steadfast will become natural as long as you know that no matter what, every environment in the kingdom is sure for returns. Is sure for returns. Is sure for returns. As much as you know, you keep bouncing, you keep pursuing, you keep enjoying it. In the precious name of Jesus, may everyone's revelation be further enlarged Amen. to see the reality of the returns on kingdom advancement stewardship. Yes. This year will be a year of singing new songs in your life. Yes. In the name of Jesus. 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 Yes. Abraham so knew it. He said, I know he's able to raise Isaac back from the dead. He's not a robber. Whatever he tells you to give, he gives you back a multiplied form. <laughs> Amen. One Isaac was laid on the altar, and then the generation covered, the, the, the swan blessing covered all his seed after him throughout their generations. From one Isaac to all his generations. One Isaac, he knew, he, he knew, he, he knew. So he pursued after God for 100 years. How many years? He called him forth at 75. Genesis 24, verse 4. And then he ended his journey at 175. And he ended his journey in active partnership with God. 100 old years. Your story will be sweeter. Your story will be sweeter. Your story will be sweeter. Paul the Apostle ended his journey as Paul the aged. Paul the aged. The book of Philemon, chapter 1, verse 9. He said, I have run the race. I've finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there's a crown leader for me. Till his old age. His old age. As much as he knows. That's what he do. That's what we wrote it. As much as he knows. So when you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain, you don't need church commendation. You don't need anybody's commendation. You just know. That this God is not a usurper. He's not looking for who to use or who to bless. He's not looking for who to <laughs> make weak, but who to make strong. He's not looking for who to dishonor, but who to honor. And he rewards us one by one. He does not reward groups. He rewards individuals. As much as he knows, you don't need the encouragement to keep driving, sir. <laughs> my covenant practice in finance is natural. I wasn't looking for anything. I've never needed to me and you can't discourage me. 
I had it, I heard it. <laughs> the things we have heard and seen and look upon and our hands have handled. When your hand begins to handle you, you know it. You can tell it. In the precious name of Jesus, this is a year of breaking forth. Amen. Many more people will build churches for Christ this year. Amen. They said this man is worthy for you to attend to him because he has built us a synagogue. He said, I will come. Favor is always drawn by stewardship. He said, I will come. Christ will leave everybody and go to his house. He said, I will come. <laughs> I'm coming. He said, no, 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 master, don't come to my house. I will come. Luke chapter 7 and verse 1 to 4. I will come. I will come. Why? He has built us a synagogue. I will come. You say, what did you say? He said, he built for us a synagogue. I'm coming. I'm coming. Tell him I'm coming. <laughs> Your service just attracts favor from God naturally. It attracts favor from God naturally. Something is breaking forth in your life. Yeah. No one shall be an onlooker this year. Yeah. You shall not be an onlooker this year. Yeah. You shall not be an onlooker this year. Yeah. It will be clear that God has positioned you finally. Yeah. All your markers are going to hide in this year. Yeah. They shall see the hand of God upon your life. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 So shall it be. Now, to secure maximum returns on our kingdom, still worship, we must continue to engage in it willingly. Anything you do that is not out of your will is a waste. If I do this willingly, I have a reward. If it gets my will, I'm only passing time. First Corinthians 9, 17. If you are before the willing mind, is accepted. Willing mind, is accepted. <laughs> you are a self minister, willingly, willingly. You enjoy preparing for it. You enjoy praying over the members of the team. You enjoy praying over members of the fellowship. Willingly. You are a house provider, willingly. You are smiling in opening the door. You are smiling, preparing the, the room. You are smiling, willingly, willingly. Two, it must be done cheerfully. Cheerfully. Not every service is acceptable to God. <laughs> These are the conditions that make our service to worship profitable. It must be done cheerfully. God loves a cheerful giver. Because you serve not the Lord your God with cheerfulness and gladness and joyfulness of heart. For the abundance of all things, you serve your enemy. So it's counterproductive. We must serve him cheerfully. You are a health provider. You are smiling at everybody coming in. You are welcome. I'm sure you had a great week. You are welcome. I'm sure you had a great week. With joy all over you. Not watching how they enter. Not watching where they, uh, where they put their shoe. Amen. Not saying, look at my carpet. Cap I just cleaned it. They have brought your leg again. Your cheerfully is a privilege to house Jesus. Wherever two or three are got to write my name, there am I in the midst of them. You are not housing the brethren, you are housing Jesus. Yes, sir. You are housing Jesus. You are housing Jesus. If the president comes to your house and he comes from a mod, can you complain? No, you are very happy. You are telling your friend, the president came to my house today. You know, because he's president. What of Jesus? Came to your house, you are now frightening. Uh -huh. When they finish, <laughs> my wife and I want to go out. Is there a God's fault that gives you where to go to? If you're in the hospital, can you go out? Can you go out from the hospital? Yes, sir. Can you tell the doctor that I'm going to see a friend yes, sir. when you're on admission? No. Stop doing younger for God, sir. He has other houses. Yes, sir. He has many more houses that are more busy than your own. Yes, sir. Joyfully, my friend. Or can your house go? <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Now watch. It's the word of them that diligently seek him. So do it diligently. Study to prepare for your fellowship. To go to your service unit group. Get yourself ready to see how to solve problems where everybody may be found. Can I hear your amen? 
fully know that God is watching. God is watching whether you are faking it or you are really doing it. Do it faithfully. A faithful man shall abound with blessings, but it that makes it to be rich and not be innocent. Do it faithfully. It is required of you that a man be found faithful. Do it faithfully. First Corinthians 4 and verse 2. Do it faithfully. 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 These are vital conditions. And then finally, do it righteously. No games. Righteously. Hebrews 12, 28. The Bible says, Wherefore, we receiving the kingdom that cannot be received, removed, that cannot be moved, let us have grace. Whereby we may serve God acceptably with reference and godly fear. <laughs> do it righteously. It will not be acceptable if you are playing games at the back of it. Matthew 7, 21 to 23. Hear what he said. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Now, many will say to me on that day, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have we not cast out devils? And in thy name have we not done many wonderful works? Wonderful works in still worship? And then will I confess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that walk in iniquity. That shall not be the lot of anyone. Yes. Let's do it righteously. No games, no schemes. Mm? No double tongue. Let's do it righteously. Let's do it heartily. It makes a world of difference. No one's labor shall be wasted. Yes. I say your labor shall not be wasted. Yes. 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 In the name of Jesus. Yes. Now the good news is you're on your way up. Yes. You see, you're on your way up. Yes. You are on your way up. Yes. You are on your way up. Yes. Everyone serving God ends up a giant. You are on your way up. Yes. Abraham ended up a giant on your way up. Yes. Moses ended up a giant on your way up. Job scared above all others. You're on your way up. Yeah. Daniel took the throne of Babylon. You're on your way up. Yeah. David was on top of Israel. You're on your way up. Yeah. Peter, a servant of Jesus Christ, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, was an outstanding apostle. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, Romans 1 1, Titus 1 1, was on top of the apostle of Christ. Every generous servant of God ends up a giant. This year, the giant in you will come alive. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. I said this year, the giant in you will come alive. Yeah. Now, the Lord spoke to me a very humbling word. This year, 2024, many shall be a thousand times over where they used to be. Yeah. Man shall be a thousand times over where they were in 2023. Yeah. Man shall be a thousand times over where they were in 2023. Yeah. I said, man, it shall be a thousand times over yeah. where they were in 2023. Yeah. The favor of God will bellow on you. Yeah. His fearful favor will distinguish you. Yeah. The world will know that God has shown up in your own case. Some will believe that. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. 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 It's so awesome. But that's you. You are in God's mind for Fortune 2024. Amen. God is launching to your own realm of fortune finally. Stand to your feet, everybody. Lift up your two hands to heaven. Again, speak to the Lord. Fortune 2024, here I come. Totally on God's side. Here I come. Totally on God's side. Serving his purpose. All the days of my life. So help me, Jesus. Now, pray in the spirit, everybody. Call for that grace.
the altar of prayer is the throne of grace. grace to remain on God's side in Jesus precious name we are praying nothing goes dry on God's side. You can't be on God's side and suffer affliction. When they were with him for three and a half years, not one person was feeble among them. No sickness was named among the disciples. But they were with Jesus. They were on his side. Exodus 32 verse 26, who is on the Lord's side? Come unto me now. For everyone on God's side all through the year 2024, you won't know the meaning of sickness. Yeah. You won't know the meaning of disease. Yeah. Whatever is contrary to your head right now, I cause them from the root in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Everything contrary to fortune in your environment is overturned in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Everything contrary to fortune in your business and career is overturned in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Every cause of misfortune on anyone's life is broken finally this morning. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. So shall it be. Yeah. Lift up your two hands and give glory to God. Celebrate him. Magnify him. There is none like him. Thank you, Jesus. Take all the praise. In Jesus' precious name. Can you sing this song one morning? It's a great thing to serve the Lord. It is a great thing to serve. Choir, would you lead us in that song, please? a big big hand of praise and please you may be seated I have the privilege tonight to read the 2023 
good report. To the glory of God, the Covenant Highway's prophetic word for the year 2023 was supernaturally delivered to us as a commission in unmistakable terms. Truly, the God of Wonder Double is still very much at work in our midst as he had covenanted. I, the God of Wonder Double, is visiting you and will remain in your midst until you don't want me again. This has been our story over the past nine years. We have recorded significant increases by the hand of God in areas such as numbers of new converts, first timers, WSF attendance, and many more. Somebody celebrating God for that. One, Shiloh 2023 report. To the glory of God, Shiloh 2023 was a huge success with well over 2 million participants in attendance in all, in all our viewing centers across all states of Nigeria and about 300,000 participants from foreign mission for this prophetic piece. Make it bigger for Jesus this morning. Here at the Faith Tabernacle, we had participants from 55 nations scattered across the five continents of the world. To God alone be all the glory. Furthermore, we had over 9 million live streams on social media from across 155 nations of the world. May the impact of Shiloh 2023 continue to be visibly manifested in the lives of all participants in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, physical development. While the mission executed several physical development projects, both within Nigeria and around the world, well over 2,000 new projects commenced in the course of the year 2023. As at the time of this report, most have been completed dedicated, and are now in use. Individuals around the nations of Africa have built, completed, and delivered to the commission sanctuaries for the Lord, ranging from 450 to 200 capacity. Such nations include Botswana, Benin Republic, Congo Brazzaville, Sierra Leone, and Malawi. Celebrate Jesus for this. Number three, our school network has been blessed with three new primary schools, Kingdom Heritage Model Schools, and all the existing, existing ones have been making outstanding strides over the years, and to God be all the glory. Number four, our youth ministry, known as Youth Alive Fellowship, recorded a staggering attendance at our August Annual Youth Alive Convention 2023 with an increase of 70% of attendance on ground over the 2022 figures. Thousands of the youths turned their lives to Christ, most of whom received the Holy Ghost baptism and were baptized in water by immersion also. Over 3,928 testimonies of salvation, healing, deliverance from various addictions, and others were recorded at the conventions. Number five, Covenant University Good Reports. Covenant University ranked number one in Nigeria and number one in West Africa and number seven in Africa in the 2023 Times Higher Education Sub-Saharan African University ranking. Somebody celebrate Jesus for that. <laughs> Covenant University emerged as a climate champion at the 16th United Nations Conference of Youth, COIN 16, the official youth precursor event to the United Nations Climate Change Conference of Parties. Number six, Landmark University Good Report. 
The Webometric Ranking Landmark University secures impress impressive positions in the Webometric Rankings, holding the second position among private universities in Nigeria. The ninth position nationally and the 40th position across the African continent. The Impact Ranking Landmark University attains global recognition in the Times Higher Education Impact Ranking, securing a position in the range of 800 to 1,000 plus nationally. It stands at the third best among Nigerian universities. For all of this good report of the year 2023, give Jesus a big, big, big hand of praise this morning. For that, we receive the choir to lead us in high praises. Please rise on your feet.
In the segment of impartation, I long to see you, he said, that may impart you some spiritual gift to the end that you may be established. God will establish you in his fortune 2024 agenda. Yeah. By the impartation of this hour, my God will establish you in his agenda of fortune, fortune 2024. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. For I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gifts to the end that he may be established. Impartation is for our establishment. My God will establish you in his agenda. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. To miss one's timing is a misfortune. You won't miss this agenda this year. Yeah. Luke 19 verse 42. Jesus wept over Jerusalem. 42, 44, because they knew not the time of their visitation. So they became victims of misfortune. Read 42 and see what he's saying. You won't miss this time. He said, if thou hast known, even today, this day, at least in this day, the things which belong to your peace, but now they are hid from thy eyes. Because they are hid from your eyes, for the days will come upon you that thy enemies shall cast a beach about you, a trench around about you, and compass thee round and keep thee in on every side. Head captive. And shall lay thee even with the ground. And thy children within thee, they shall not leave 
in thee one stone upon another because thou knowest not the time of thy visitation. If you miss an exam time, it's a misfortune. You come back for it next year. Next year, one whole year lost for missing the time. For missing the time. No one will miss this season. God's agenda of fortune will not fail in your life. As you empower with diverse grace today, it will establish you in that agenda. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and get seated, please. We are in the last days where my people shall never be ashamed. We heard Prophet Joel saying, I've given you the former rain, more deliver because it's time to come for you. The rain, the former and the little rain in the same month. And I will restore to you the years that the canker worm has eaten. The caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great army, which I send among you. And my people shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord. And my people shall never be ashamed. In the name of Jesus, in the hard time that has come upon the world, you shall not be ashamed. Yeah. Not one of us here will beg bread. Yeah. No one will be homeless. Yeah. We are in the later end of the last days. I forgot to say you shall never be ashamed. means that shame will visit the world, but it shall exempt you. By the anointing today, grace to engage with the covenant terms of fortune will be released upon your life. Yeah. The Holy Ghost is not the doer, it's the helper of the doer. When you choose to do it, he helps you to do it. His mission is to help you and I to do it. He doesn't do it for us, he helps us to do it. I will send you another comforter. So he's a helper. He helps us to do what we choose to do. Choose you this day whom you shall serve. Then he helps you to serve him. He helps you to serve him. He helps me to serve him. So it's the helper, it's not the doer. Holy Ghost, come and do it. He doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. He helps you to do what you choose to do. The choice is yours. I lay before you life and death. Choose life. Amen. So he helps you to make your choice a reality. He helps me to make my choice a reality. He doesn't do it for you, sir. Sir. He won't. He won't give for you. No. He engraces you to give if you choose to give. You choose first, my friend. You choose. I make it in Gloria. You choose first. Now, I was a soul winner before I was baptized in the Holy Ghost. So it only helps me to sustain and be more effective. Amen. Amen. I was baptized in the Holy Ghost in 75. I planted the church by grace in 73. So it helps you to do it. It's a choice first. A choice first. A choice first. Then it comes into empower us. Don't abuse his ministry, sir. People abuse the Lord. Don't abuse his ministry. If I pour a barrel of oil on your head, what you don't choose, it won't help you to do it. He can't choose for you. He can't choose for me. Ameko Tandrelo, Aridi, Alumbra, Kenkatona. This year, Lord, I desire an upgrade in my spiritual life. He said, yes, I help you. Holy Ghost, come help me to do it. He helps you to stand in your choice. He doesn't make a choice for you. At 17 items on my Shiloh expectations. 17. 16 is about my spiritual life. A change of level. Amen. It's what you choose that he empowers you to deliver. I make my choice clear on Matthew 33 and he helped me and kept me running. 
tirelessly, excitedly, cheerfully, because I made the choice. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? You choose to live a sanctified life. Then it comes in to help you and me to do it. Choice first. Winners are known with oil. The oil is real. It's an everlasting covenant between God, people, and God. But that's how it works. It's there to help you beyond you to deliver your choice. To help you beyond you to their power and bear record and beyond their power they are willing of themselves. They chose to give so it helped them beyond their power in their given life. In their poverty, they were liberal. Can I hear your amen? amen. Did somebody get it right now? I chose to align with the terms of marriage in the kingdom. I chose to. It helped me to. And it's working. We chose to engage with the church growth terms. And it helped us to stand in it. And it's now 40 years. Now, listen to me. The help you need to secure your place in Fortune 2024 agenda will be delivered now. Yeah. 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 Quickly, we are in the era of fortune in the body of Christ. Amen. What era are we in? For in the last days shall come to pass that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above all mountains, shall be exalted above all hills, and all nations shall flow into it. Teach us his way. The church will be flowing at a frequency the world cannot understand. Amen. The world will bow to the church. Teach us his way. Yes. We are in the era of fortune in the body of Christ. Micah chapter 4 verse 1 and 2 and Isaiah chapter 2 verse 2 and 3. We are in the era of fortune in the body of Christ. Ten men shall hold to the skirt of it as a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have said that God is with you. We are in the era of fortune where our life will be converting people into the kingdom. <laughs> Chapter 8 of Zechariah and verse 23. Now, the Spirit of God will be poured out in the last days, and many will so name by themselves by the name of Israel. The blessing will be so, so thick. Isaiah 44, verse 3 and 4, and 5 and 6. We are in the era of fortune in the body of Christ. He showed Ezekiel seven candlesticks with both upon them, all of gold. All of gold. We are in the golden era of the church. Ezekiel chapter 4. And verse 1 to 6. But not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. This golden age is not accessible by intellectual exertion. It's by my spirit. That's what God is saying. It takes his spirit to step into this realm of fortune. And there was another with oil in the midst of his brethren. This was the Lord came upon him from that day forward. That is coming upon you and I today. Amen. To operate in the realm of fortune without stress. Can I hear your amen? amen. <laughs> say, by the impartation of today, say it with me. By the impartation of, today, by the impartation of this early morning, I, I shall be walking in the realm of divine favor. Walk in the realm of fortune without stress. Without stress. Without stress. Without stress. Without stress. Without stress. Now, how many here really choose to operate in that realm this year? Do you know what that means? It means you have chosen all that is required to work in it. Amen. If how many people want to go to heaven? Everybody wants to go. But why are you doing what will make a man go there? That's deception. You want to work in fortune. Let me see your hands. That means all the spiritual virtues required to operate in fortune, you agree with them. You agree to engage with them. You don't agree, it won't work. You don't agree, it won't work. You don't agree, it won't work. Don't make a choice without carrying along the conditions. 
But those conditions cannot be fulfilled on our own. We need the help of the Holy Spirit. That's why this morning, as the oil comes on your head, watch out for the following. One, it shall be upon each one of us the spirit of holiness. Because you can't suffer shame walking in the fear of God. No matter how hard the environment. The Lord knows the days of the upright. The heaven shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil day. In the time of famine, they shall be satisfied. The same thing we call spirit of holiness is what we call the spirit of the fear of the Lord. I decree that to come upon each one today yes, as the oil comes on our head. Amen. Living to please God will become your new lifestyle. Amen. A crave to please God will become your new crave. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. So watch out for the release of the spirit of the fear of God upon your life. That will make your life a surprise to you from today. From today. Not tomorrow. From today. As this oil comes on you, your taste will change. Yeah. I say your taste will change. Yeah. It will become a sanctified taste. Yeah. Sanctified sight. Yeah. Sanctified ears. Yeah. Sanctified feet. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Come and lift up, lift up your right hand and say before the Lord, I receive, I receive. the spirit receive. of the fear of the Lord. That will sanctify my eyes. Sanctify my ears. Sanctify my hands. Sanctify my feet. From this day forward. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Amen. Number two. Expect that as the oil comes on your head, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him to come upon you. And when that happens, darkness can hold you hostage. Revelation equals light. Arise and shine, your light has come. <laughs> Revelation equals light. The entrance of his word gives light and gives understanding to the simple. So expect a deluge of the spirit of revelation to come upon your life this morning that will help you walking in the light of God in these dark days, these days of gross darkness and every misfortune will clear off your path. Yeah. The kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of weeping and gnashing of teeth, a kingdom of misfortune. But when light comes, darkness clears the way. You will not know misfortune anymore in your life. Yeah. Can I hear your loudest amen? Yeah. And I hear your loudest amen. Yeah. When it was looking like this building will not be completed, the Lord spoke to me from Genesis chapter 1. It took me six days to build the world, to create the world and the fullness thereof. I would not need two months to finish an ordinary building. Light came, darkness flared. Jesus did it. All through this year, you never lack light, yeah. you will never lack access to light. 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 You never lack access to light. You never lack access to light. Now, number three, what to expect before we administer the oil. Very important. What am I to expect as this oil comes on me? Expect a baptism of the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of what? We are in the rainy days of the church. Psalm 110, verse 1 to 3. The Lord said to my Lord, Sit down my right hand, and make the enemy their foes too. Jesus will not come until the church takes the throne of this earth. Help me tell those who are angry. Jesus will not come until the church takes the throne. The church is taking the throne of the earth. We're not talking about politics, we're talking about <laughs> dominating the world. Dominating the world is bringing joy, bringing solutions to the world around them. 
The greatest employers of labor will arise from the church. The church will become the global breadwinner of the world. 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 And by wisdom, kings reign. So there's going to be a release of the many-sided wisdom of God in all its innumerable aspects and infinite varieties according to Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 8 to 11. Amen. Amplify Bible. There shall be a release of strange order of wisdom. Strange order of wisdom. Strange order of wisdom. The same kind of wisdom that enthroned Joseph will enthrone the church. The same wisdom that enthroned Daniel in his land of captivity will enthrone the church. Wisdom is coming. It's not found in the land of the living. Kofumpia, Akoka, Krodia, Ezuzialaba. Not found in the land of the living. The deep said it's not in me. The force of the air cannot catch it. The sergeants can't locate it. Yet it's real. It's explainable. But it is, its effect is inexplainable. Its effect is inexplainable. Wisdom is coming home. And by your, the, the encounter this morning, you are coming online. Amen. You will not miss your place in it. Amen. You will not miss your place in it. Amen. You will not miss your place in it. Amen. You will not miss your place in it. Amen. Give the Lord the big hand of praise, everybody. We are talking about spiritual virtues that will establish our place in this Fortune 24 agenda. You won't miss your place in it. <laughs> now, number five. And we end there. It shall be upon your life the oil of favor. I said, the anointing this morning shall be upon your life the oil of favor. It shall be upon your life the oil of favor. It shall be upon your life the oil of favor. It shall be upon your life the oil of favor. Wherever your name is mentioned, favor will respond. Wherever they cite your name, favor will answer. Favor will locate you from where you least expected in your life. Watch out for these five spiritual virtues. As we administer the oil this morning, watch out for the release. The, the tangible release. Tangible release. <laughs> tangible release. Tangible release of the spirit of holiness that will change your taste to a sanctified taste. Your sight to a sanctified sight. Your hearing to a sanctified hearing. Your hands to sanctify hands. Amen. Your feet to sanctify feet. Amen. Watch out for the spirit of wisdom, of the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of God. Spirit of revelation that shatters the darkness of misfortune around a man's life. Can I hear your amen? amen? Watch out for the spirit of wisdom that enthrones. That enthrones. That enthrones. It's your turn. It's your turn. You won't miss your place this time. Yeah. I told you the devastation that follows missing one's timing. Don't miss it. We are now fortune, fortune 2024. You can't tell what you are going to be 2025. This is only one zone. It may not come again. It may not come again. God is saying, I have a fortune package for my people in this commission in 2024. And these are the things to do to make it happen. To take your place in it. These are the spiritual virtues needed. The help of the Holy Spirit needed to stand in it. Don't miss it. It may not come back again. It may not come back again. Don't suffer the loss when you can secure the gain. Don't suffer the loss when you can secure the gain. If you will serve God in truth and in deed this time, amen, according to the rules of the game, willingly, cheerfully, joyfully, my God, Diligently, it will bellow its fortune on your life. It will be clear. 
Then God has reached out to you. Stand to your feet. Come on, give the Lord a big hand of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, when I was worldwide, hear this. Every impartation of the Spirit answers to a thirst of the soul and a longing of the flesh. You will never get imparted by the Spirit of God without a crave. A crave. How much will God give the Holy Ghost to them that ask Him? A crave. A crave. A crave. Come unto me. He said, uh, if any man thirsts, let him come. And he was speaking of the Holy Ghost. There's a thirst required to secure a release. My soul thirsted for thee, and my flesh longed for thee, to see thy power and thy glory. That has not been cancelled. The oil can't cancel it. There is a cry that secures the peace of God in the oil upon your life. Now, lift up your two hands. Holy Spirit, I don't want to miss my place in this era of fortune in the body of Christ. Endure me today through the mystery of the anointing oil with the spirit of holiness the spirit of revelation the spirit of wisdom help me today to take my place in fortune 2024 agenda in the presence of my enemies in the presence of my enemies let it be the oil of favor on my life I may sit here as a spirit of servanthood. He said, I'll, I'll put my spirit upon him and he will bring. Now, Isaiah 42 and verse 1 to 4. This is what the word says. Because we need that to stay on without looking back. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my elect, to whom my soul delighted. I have put my spirit upon him and he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Now watch. He shall not cry, nor lift the voice, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. Now a breast reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. Now he shall not fail, nor be discouraged. That's what our spirit does. The spirit of servanthood helps you and me not to faint not be discouraged until the task is accomplished. Not to fail or be discouraged until the task is accomplished. Amen. Amen. Today, I receive the spirit of servanthood that will keep me going in season and out of season until the job is done. Until the reward is released. Until the task is accomplished. So help me, Lord. Now, there are these five-fold stuff we are out to receive today. Now, lift up your two hands. And in your own word, now, crave for this baptism of the spirit of life. Crave for this endowment of the spirit of life. My place in Fortune 2024 agenda shall not be taken by another man. My crown another man will not take. Now, call out for the help of the Holy Spirit. I've made my choice to be a full partaker of Fortune 2024 agenda. I need your help. I need the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Now, keep me flourishing in hard times. I need the spirit of revelation. I need the spirit of servanthood. I need the spirit of wisdom. And I need the oil of favor in my life. Call out for that, call out for that, call out for this. I must not miss my place in this golden age of the church. I 
have made my choice. I need your help. Holy Spirit, I've made my choice. But I need your help. I've made my job, but I need your help. Call for his help. Walking in the light will bail us out of every misfortune of darkness. Jesus, precious name we have prayed. Please take your bottles of oil up. Saul was anointed with oil and two things happened. God gave him another heart. You are not living here the same way you came. And all those signs came to pass that day. As God changed, by the mercy of the anointing with oil, he returned with another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. His story changed that day. Everybody's taste will change today. Yeah. That day. So it's an instrument of instant intervention. Now you know what? This day, sickness will vanish. Yeah. Disease will vanish. Yeah. Eyes will be open. Because every yoke of misfortune shall be destroyed. Yeah. Every yoke of misfortune shall be destroyed. Yeah. Everything contrary to fortune in your life shall be destroyed. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. 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 Yeah. So it's not just, it's not a magic one. My God. It's a mystery of the kingdom. That's ordained for our liberty when we are edged in. It destroys all yokes, brings you and I into realms of refreshing, realms of fortune, realms of high favor. In the precious name of Jesus, whatever you crave for today is delivered for a testimony. Yeah. How many truly crave for the spirit of holiness today? How many pray for, how many desired it? How many crave for it? It is yours. Yeah. How many people here crave for the spirit of revelation? That you look at your Bible and light is just like lightning. Now it is yours. Yeah. How many crave the new level for the spirit of servanthood today? God will turn to surprise to yourself. Yeah. You discover from this January 1, your attitude to kingdom matters will change forever. Yeah. How many truly crave for the spirit of wisdom? It's yours. Yeah. It's yours. Yeah. And whatever is from above is above all. Everybody will know your wisdom from above. Yeah. When he loved his wisdom on Solomon, all the kings of the earth came to hear the wisdom of Solomon. It was above for them all, above them all. From now, in your business, in your, in your workplace, in your family, God's wisdom will be oozing forth in your life. Yeah. You are going to be enthroned. Yeah. You shall be enthroned. Yeah. This is your year of enthronement. Yeah. This is your year of enthronement. Yeah. It's your year of enlargement. Yeah. How many crave from the, for the oil of favor? 
the oil of favor. From this morning, you start smelling favor. Many will receive cause of favor today. Favor will become part of your name from henceforth. Many will bear fortune as your name. Because your story will change finally. First Samuel 10, I want us to read that verse. God, as he turned back to go from somewhere, God gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord, come go down, please. Now it was so that when he had turned his back, verse 9, to go from somewhere, God gave him another heart, and all those signs came to pass that day. This is that day in your life. It shall come to pass in that day that the burden of misfortune shall be taken from your shoulder, the yoke of slavery from your neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Even this morning, sir, in the name of the Lord Jesus, everything that appears a yoke of misfortune on your head, on your mind, loss of memory, name it, bad eyesight, poor hearing, completely deaf. Whatever is a yoke of misfortune is declared destroyed in your life. Yeah. Now, lift up your bottles before the Lord. The content of the bottles in your hand is hereby declared the holy anointing oil. Yeah. As this comes on your head, in the name of Jesus, it releases upon you the spirit of holiness. Yeah. The spirit of revelation. Yeah. The spirit of servanthood. Yeah. The spirit of wisdom. Yeah. And the oil of favor. Yeah. It will establish you in God's agenda of fortune 2024. Yeah. You will not know misfortune all through this year. And all through the days of your life. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. All that believe in the mystery of the anointing oil. As a conveyor of the spirit of the Lord. Put a little of this on your fingertip. And say to your forehead. And begin to appropriate the prophetic word as you believe them. <laughs> it's a one on nine day. 4 Samuel 10, verse 9. As he turned his back to go from somewhere, the Lord gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. That day. That day. New day. New dawn. A rebel like a day A plan grak tano rabelo. A plan proctari de di. A coco pan de lo de po. Hallelujah. Miracles are taking place right now. Bodies are lifted, pressures are lifted. New day, your head is busting for. Your life is taking a new turn. New day, it's your hour of visitation. It's your time of encounter with God. Jesus, precious name, we are praying. Amen. Now, by revelation, we cut the light on taking the shot of the oil, and we have given the devil dirty slaps on both cheeks over the years. As you take this shot, sir, except God has not sent me, whatever is out of order in your body, we come back to order. Yeah. Whatever represents misfortune on any of your organs will be cleared off on the spot. Yeah. Take the shot and all the chaff in your body 
consume some quenchable fire. Yes. All the organs of your body will be perfected. Yes. <laughs> it's a change of body. Yes. You are living here with a change of body. Yes. A change of mind. Yes. A change of sight. Yes. A change of hearing. Yes. Everything about your system changes today. Yes. To the body of Christ. Yes. God is perfecting us concerning your head right now. Yeah. You believe that? Please take a shot of this oil and glorify God. The battle is over. The battle is over. Yeah. Cover your bottles. Lift up your two hands. We shout some praise to him right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You are going to dance your victory right now. You are going to dance your triumph. You have entered 2024 as a brand new person. As a brand new person. My God, equipped to operate in the realm of fortune. Equipped to take your place in the realm of fortune. Now, danceable high praise, please. Danceable high praise. Amen. Now, now. All the things are happening. Things are happening right now. Things are happening right now. The things that are out against your system, they are giving way. They are clearing the way. Somebody's sight is just open. Somebody's ear is just popped open. Something's happening to you right now to show that God has launched you into your realm of fortune. Come on now, let's praise him.
within the next seven minutes, Jesus has touched you wherever you are in this service tonight, around the world. Just dance your way to the front. He's touched you. He's turned something around in your life. The pain you came with has disappeared. The growth that came with you has vanished. The discomfort has gone away. Just come down. We dance together. You go back to your seat and we close in the service. Amen. Amen. And so, across the nations, please do that in the next nine minutes. The dancing in the front, you're taking the testimony for those who have time to take their testimonies. And then we are all running to enjoy the first day celebration at various homes. Amen. Come on, let's praise him. What do you can do? What do you can do, Jehovah?
Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everyone. And um, please be seated. Next four minutes, we'll take a few testimonies, and then we're ready for final prophetic blessing as we close in this service. Amen. Hallelujah. Emmanuel Tayema, Sunday, for 29 years has had sharp pain in the chest, but right after the anointing oil was administered, that 29 year affliction disappeared. Amen. He set free to the glory of God. Amen. Margaret, for two years, has had pain in her leg. But right after the administration of the anointing, that pain disappeared and now set free to the glory of God. Adeoshun Ayomide for six months has been having excruciating burning pain in the back. But right after the, after the anointing was administered, that burning sensation and all the pain associated disappeared to the glory of God. Amen. Olua Timilei for two months has been having body itching, but right after the anointing was administered, the body itching disappeared, now set free to the glory of God. Olua Timilei. Koku Francis. For 15 years, has had a snake-like moving object going around his body. But as he danced and praised God this morning, that 15-year affliction disappeared and now set free to the glory of God. <laughs> Ugo Udo for seven years has been having pain on the right side of the stomach after a fibroid operation. But in the, as the anointing oil was administered, that pain disappeared and now she set free to the glory of God. Yeah. Ogochuku Ogbuka for four months has had pain in the anus, but right after the anointing was administered, that pain disappeared, now set free to the glory of God. Yes. Gabriel, Gabriel Che, for three years has had waist pain but right after the anointing was administered, that pain disappeared and now set free to the glory of God. Imobu Maris, for two years, has had waist pain, but after taking a shot of the anointing, that pain disappeared and now set free to the glory of God. Akinola, for one week, has had swollen feet, but as soon as she administered the anointing, her feet went back to the right size, now set free to the glory of God. Shall we all rise to our feet? And give the Lord, the doer of all these, a big hand of praise. Your life will never run out of miracles in the year 2024. Many shall be turned to testimonials among us. It's one thing to have a testimony, it's another to be a testimonial. 
In the name of Jesus, in the year 2022, many shall be turned into testimonies. Amen. For all these wonders, there are quite a number of them now we cannot attend to. Lift up your two hands, everyone, and let's give God thanks. Give God thanks. Give him praise. Give him adoration. There's no one like our God. Let everyone in front begin to go back to their seat. Whatever God has done is forever. This shall be forever in your life. No reversal. What that time from for testimonies, please, on your way back to your seat. In the name of Jesus Christ. Good news. The Fortune 2024 sticker is out. I'm a winner. Fortune 2024. Your portion. Search for your hands on these stickers goes around the world that it will answer in the life of everyone that place it on the doors of their house, on their vehicles, wherever. Whatever is decided, favor we answer. Favor we answer. No misfortune, no miscarriage, no mishap in the name of Jesus. So let it be, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Now we release you today to trigger access to the realm of fortune for every single winner. Yeah. Let this be the story worldwide yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Secondly, Fortune 2024 Winners Covenant Exchange. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let all the men in the house say with me, Praise God, fortune is my portion in 2024. Let all the women respond, I'm also redeemed to flourish in hard times. Let the men shout, congratulations. Amen. Now, wait a minute. The women now, come on and say the first one. Praise God, fortune is my portion in 2024. All the men I'm also redeemed to flourish in hard times. Now let the men shout congratulations. Let the women respond amen and amen. Give the Lord the biggest hand of praise. Amen. That's the good news. Fortune is your portion in 2024. No devil will take that away from you. No wicked man or woman will take that away from you. No agent or devil will take that away from you. Whatever was dubbed impossible in your life in 2023 shall be cheaply possible now. Whatever the enemy has stolen from you, either too, shall be restored this time. For your God said, I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten. The palm worm, the caterpillar, my great army which I send among you, shall eat in place and be satisfied. Praise the name of the Lord. Everything stolen from you in that tongue, no matter how long it was, shall be restored to you this year. Whatever they rob you of that makes you look like being put to shame shall be restored in grand style. In this church, Someone that lost his job 29 years got it back. Someone else 19 years got it back with all the benefits. In the name of Jesus, whatever has been stolen from you by the devil, it is turned back sevenfold. Yeah. Welcome to Fortune 2024. Yeah. It shall be your song all through the year. Welcome to Fortune 2024. 
It shall be your identity throughout 2024. In the name of Jesus, you are singing your new song this year. And it's starting this month. You are singing your new song this year. And it's starting this month. God has given you another heart. You begin to operate in another realm. You are operating in another realm of favor. Another realm of fortune. In the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Well, the race into the realm of fortune begins this morning. Therefore, <laughs> covenant hour of prayer begins tomorrow, Tuesday. Midweek comes on on Wednesday. Now, our annual vision sharing leadership empowerment summit comes in on Saturday for all workers, all of the workers in the church. And you have all the outline, all the WSF ministers, assistants and secretaries, all ordained workers, all leaders of you know, statutory bodies and um, service units, all pastors. And it's coming up on Saturday. Honor Jesus with your new disposition as a worker in this church to be part of that assignment. And watch how God will enlighten, illuminate, and reposition you for the best of stewardship in the year 2024. Don't miss that for anything in Jesus' name. Amen. Lift up your two hands, everyone. Give God thanks for the light that came this night. The illumination that came to launch you into this era. My time has come finally. I refuse to sell off. 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 It's my turn at last. I won't play careless. I refuse to play careless, careless with this season. It's my turn at last. Can I have you say that loud? It's my turn at last. It's my turn at last. Your turn at last to be married. Your turn at last to carry your children. Your turn at last to go up in your business. Your turn at last for career explosion. Your turn at, uh, your turn at last for restoration of total health. Your turn at last for peace in your home. Your turn at last for a greater quality work with God. Your turn at last for high level spirituality. It's your turn at last. For gross distaste for sin. It's your turn at last. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. One more time. Happy, happy new year. And be blessed. Lift up your two hands, everyone. Don't forget to anoint your homes with this oil. Anoint what things appear precious to you. Anoint your children who are not around. Anoint their pictures. And expect nothing. Of Fortune 2024 speaking on their behalf. Yeah. Anoint your home, anoint your business place. Expect nothing but Fortune 24, Fortune 2024 at work and everywhere. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. So shall it be. Yeah. Lift up those two hands. Give God thanks. Give God thanks. Give God thanks. Give God thanks. Lift your hand and let's give glory to God. Appreciate him. Give him thanks one more time. You are worthy of all the praise. Worthy of all the glory. Worthy of all the honor. Thank you, Father. And blessed be your holy name. You are worthy of all the praise. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Somebody believes, say a loud amen. amen. Let's share the goodness of the Lord together. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. Praise the Lord.
fortune is my portion in 2024. Congratulations. Amen and amen. Congratulate somebody as you go. God bless you.